Good evening. Welcome to the Sunderland Board of Selectmen meeting. Today is Monday, March 26, 2018. And our first item on our agenda is a discussion with the Finance Committee, or their representative this evening, of our uh, FY19 budget discussion. A general discussion on our budget and sort of a follow-up to all the exciting things that we've been talking about over the last three months or so. Yeah. All right. Do you want to, do you want to like go down through your recommendations or anything? Or how do you want to? Um, we don't have uh, we don't have official recommendations yet. Um, okay. As far as the override. Um, <clears throat> There's a lot of uncertainty, especially it seems when the like the numbers keep, you know, we keep getting numbers that are chipping away a little bit at a time. So we're hoping that uh, we're going to have more in depth of a discussion. Uh, we had some some past articles that we needed to address at this okay. meeting. This is the first time we've had quorum okay. in uh, about two months, so we wanted to address those and. As far as these are going, uh, the major question is that it seems to be a lot of the town's opinion uh, that there seems to be a lot of feeling that if there's going to be money and free cash, that there's going to be a lot of suggestions that people are going to kind of say, well, why, why should we have an override and if we can't just take it out of free cash? Yep. To which, you know, I, I bring up the point, the comparison that we have to the very same reason that we're recommending to switch over to. Um, Maya as far as the, the insurance because it seems easy to, to take it out of free cash when you've got it but then as we've had sure. discussion before that once that happens we tend to there always tend to be new items that show up that, that take away the budget so that you, it makes it much more difficult to, to put things away for savings so <clears throat> Well, especially when when you look at what that what that revenue shortfall is versus yeah. what's available in free cash and what's normally there because we had that aberration right. last year so you can't that can't be a correct a mile marker for where we normally are <clears throat> you, want, you want to talk if i could mr chair yeah i right. sure to talk about where the pressure points are on the budget and i have like Six of them that are highlighted. Mm -hmm. There, are, there is a, really only a, a couple of them that are considered new, new on the uh, town side. And I would start with the. I'd start with the technology line. Um, the technology um, line uh, reflects a thirteen thousand dollar increase, um, which is based on uh, Paragus assessment for technology support of ninety three dollars an hour at 10 hours per month to maintain um, our server and all our um, IT stuff. Um, as you are aware, we had a bit of a problem earlier this year that um, was an eye-opener for all of us. Um, and we know that we need to have someone on staff um, that can make sure that we're up and running and that uh, we have off-site backup and all of those things. So um, we're still recovering from an incident that happened um, in the fall at the same time we were um, trans we were converting over to a new accounting software so um, so lessons learned on that one so um, that that's why there's an increase in the technology line can I, can I weigh in on that mm -hmm. mr chair mm -hmm. um, you know we we have the people who weren't uh, in uh, at last year's town meeting and through some of the last year's budget cycle, remember that we took a uh, capital grant from the community compacts, community compact, which was an extension of a DLS <clears throat> survey, which was several years in the rear. And uh, our system is, con hardware is considerably more robust at this point, but we asked, f there has been uh, another analysis about that system and some of its vulnerabilities. Right. Our um, tender underbelly showed when moving hardware came to where did all the information go? What happened? And we don't want to ever have that happen again. I would say, and I say this without trying to introduce any any fear, right now the city of Atlanta is being held hostage by a piece of <laughs> ransomware. Yeah. Yep. Oh, no. Yep. 
Yes. And actually, that happened to us two years ago. <coughs> so, <coughs> yes, it did. So, anyway, this, this, um, we, we have, we have, and, and, uh, as one of the members of the, the financial team, uh, when the treasurer collector, the accountant, the assessor, and the town administrator all go, if that happens again and we're down just flat for a week, what do we do? Right. And the red yeah. flag goes up. And go, okay. So, how do, how do we make sure that doesn't happen again? Can I have a quick question? Yeah. Uh, we were ransomed in 2016. Did we did we end up paying a ransom for that? No, that was the, wasn't was that the police department? Was it? I think that it happened. Uh, it was, it was may it have been just hacked. Yeah, it was ransom, but it, we did not pay. Short answer is no. We were able to uh, squeak our way through that one by <laughs> isolating some individual pieces of hardware mm -hmm. and then getting everything else backed up, which led to the current status, which led to the DLS review, which led to the implementation of our community compact, which gets us to today's budget discussion. Yeah. Now, how do we support it in a way that's in real time? Yeah, IT support's not cheap. So. Right. And, and that's traditionally but it's been priceless. a... <laughs> it's priceless. It's priceless. Well, a tough thing for a smaller town because we we can't afford to have on staff IT all the time. So we need to rely on essentially outside contractors. It gets us ten hours a month month in the off site backup, so that if something happens, we're protected. <clears throat> and we, they still have, we still have on site backups mm -hmm. too as well, yeah. right? Because I, I can't stress how important it is to have a minimum of two stage backups, mm -hmm. on site and off site, right. because I've had to deal with it at home, and sure. you know it, that's a Having that off-site backup is a godsend. And it really is. Programmatic on-site. Exactly. Shouldn't, it shouldn't be something that, you know, you got to learn, you, gotta, you have to be conditioned to do it to leave the room. It should happen automatically. Exactly yep. right. That stuff is very important. So on the first page, that's the biggest, <clears throat> that's the biggest piece. Can we talk about the telecom, Scott? The telecom expense yeah. going up. Oh yeah, so yeah, yeah. If I could, Chairman, yeah, yeah, okay. could be my backstop on yep. this, right? So for years and years and years, as long as there's been FCAT, FCAT, the agreement, license agreement with the town from FCAT was that our um, peg access funds would flow through by a percentage through the agreement to FCAT. A year ago, and people who were at special town meeting in the fall, remember we revisited the FCAT appropriation. The A year ago, the uh, state says the accounting practice is now the municipality cannot use PEG access without the legislative body's appropriation. So town meeting has to appropriate that piece now that is FCAT. This $50,000 is far from new. We've, we've appropriated, if you look back, at 18 and uh, 17, those have been values for Sunderland Telecom and expenses inside this building. Electricity, a little bit of square foot cost, a little bit of insurance. This $50,000, $53,000 is the FCAT assessment now being appropriated by annual town meeting. These funds come straight from pay access. They are not in the tax rate. And this is a function of ensuring it's transparent that peg access providers actually have money appropriated, not just through contract. So that's why it's here. It jumps out like a sore thumb. It's like, wait a minute, it's $53,000. Where'd that come from? Well, actually, we've been doing it for ever since there's been FCAT. This happens to just be a new way of going about the actual uh, approval. Right. So if you're not happy with FCAT, go to town meeting. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> But again, these numbers are straight from PEG access. I got that right? Mm -hmm. The accountant yelled at us over two things after last year's town meeting. This was one, and capital stabilization was another one. We'll talk about that in a little bit. I think that's it on two. A few more elections in, in, this year. But, but. If I could for a second, mm -hmm. it, it was interesting because of uh, <clears throat> last week or so, someone from the audience questioned why is a, the general government is up six point three percent. Well, but if you look, if you look at the offset, if you look at the offset where the cost has come, it's really not. We're not up. 
up 6.3%. It's just that we are yeah. using a different right. accounting me method. Yeah, we have to account for it. I think so you, you, know, you got to put, so that's sometimes when you talk about numbers, sometimes numbers don't necessarily right. back up. You got to dig deeper than just the surface number. Yeah. Right. So, and, and just like when you look at the elections for the town clerk election, and, and there was a question a couple of weeks ago about the elections. Well, every other year, every third year, do you have an extra election that comes into play? So it looks like you have a huge jump in your in the budget, but it's really not. It's it's either that or we have to schedule for this every year and we just be appropriating too much money. So, and, and, right. Interestingly enough, you can't you know, either revert to free cash or you, you can't encumber elections, but that's yeah. we're getting deep in the weeds there. You almost have to treat it a little more like snow and ice in that sense. Yeah, you know. it's up one year, down another. Yeah. <clears throat> the town buildings, municipal energy, is that the next one, Scott? Big one? Which is actually yeah, down. Decrease, down, right? Thirty-seven. So yeah. just it says it's down thirty-seven, but thirty-two of that is going back to the wastewater treatment plant. We had put them in on the Schedule Z, and then we took them out, but I didn't move them back to their own spot. So right. they're back in their own spot. You'll see that the wastewater treatment facilities is up thirty-two. It's just that shift. Right. Um, so far this year, we've had about six thousand dollars worth of savings from the um, solar project so i took i backed five out mm -hmm. um, and there was it's, it's part of that 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 recommendation from uh Beth Beth. Consult and yeah the it was done by usage like we're the big users of like talking specifically about electricity and how the generation percentages from the pv system would be allocated and, and based on usage waste or treatment is is you know, pretty good user of, of electricity. However, it's also not a completely town-wide so system. Based, yeah. So right. we decided that this year we'd take that out and they would stand alone on themselves like they have and rate payers would pay and someone who's got a leach field up on, you know, North Sugarloaf would not be taking that piece out of the electricity. And I was... Um, Again, from the consultant's perspective, when you simply look at it, wastewater, it uses a lot of electricity. So it was a town asset. And so anyway, that's that's the point uh, Sherry's making here. That looks like a $37,000 drop, but the reality is it's just allocated. We'll probably see another drop. We're um, in the process of purchasing our street lights. Oh, yeah. So as soon as we do that, we're going to start recognizing some um, savings there as well. And then when they do the LED street light <clears throat> conversion this summer, we'll, we'll save even more. Right. So um, hopefully next year we'll reduce that a little bit more. Nice. And this, this actually is the second really full year of production. Yes, production, it is. And, production and usage. Right. We so haven't seen see all the numbers. This is really yeah, the beginning so. of the kind of the normalizing of the total <clears throat> values. When does the, uh, the new field come online? Um, uh, down by Bubs. They said June 30th or so. Yeah, they're, they're up against a S rec, so they have to be yes. done. They have to be running by July. Okay, thanks. Uh, not direct, not directly tied to us from a generation perspective, but it would be nice from a revenue point of view because they're being taxed. Yeah, personal right. property tax for the arrays. The street lights that we just want, so just one example of the, the quiet savings that we're trying to do every yeah. year. Mm -hmm. That's something that's nice. Peter made the point at our last meeting. You yeah, know, just exactly. Like, we got to have those talking sheets. What are the six things that you did in the last year and a half? Yeah, there's there's a good example there. Scott, is, is the uh, energy number there now for FY19? Is that we're going forward or yeah, it runs it runs across a decrease in the lease value as well. Because remember that's a lease back arrangement, so we yeah okay so yeah it's 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 this this is going to be pretty much normal and steady state going forward until the ten is it ten year uh, anyway the lease buyout happens we have an opportunity at 20, the end I think. twenty years yeah. we at the end we have at the end of our lease arrangement with the owner of the generating facility the opportunity to take over the facility. 
if that happens in 20 years, we'll both be on that side of the table, Peter. <laughs> and if that happens in 20 Speaking years, the table, <laughs> above, yeah. above the ground, yeah, above the ground, say, exactly. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or down. If, if that happens, the, the full value of the generation would, would be reflected here. Right now, it's right. full value minus the lease. So. At this point, for FY19, we're reflecting uh, any expected savings from yeah, that system. Correct, mm -hmm. correct. There won't be additional savings. Correct. In it, other than there'll be less usage because of the street lights. Correct. Yeah, yeah actually, it's, it's a really good point. It, it's um, the benefit of having that relationship with that PV system moving forward is decreasing our energy usage. We may want to think about moving the street lights off the Schedule Z and putting something else on. Correct. Too, at some point. So there's yeah. that. Shifting of things Correct. around. So. That's a really good point, actually. Yeah. Take some of the, the easier stuff and put some of the heavier Bigger. budgets on there. Yeah. Yep. Right. And plus fuel costs have been going up, too. I mean, I know we did a, a good lock-in, but still, they've been... They've been, yes, going back up. They've been going up. Any, any other ones we want to hit on that? The next big jump I see is at South County EMS, SC EMS. And, Tom, you want to talk a little bit about that, the use of free cash uh, offsetting some of this, but also the run rates? Yeah, we uh, basically, um, over the last three years, four years with uh, South County EMS, uh, some ones we've been fortunate, to, and, and all the other ones pretty much also, is that we were able um, to offset some of the expenses and to, to kind of wean us into paying for South County EMS with what they call retained earnings um, and also our ambulance reserve fund. Um, as, and so I think this will be the last year of ambulance, Sunland ambulance reserve fund, like a thousand dollars or something like that. Bucks, yeah. mm -hmm. um, so in fact, the, if South County EMS utilized $204,000 from retained earnings this year, um, Deerfield is about 50% Sunland so they were at a hundred thousand. So they were their 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 budget was reduced by a um, hundred thousand. Ours was reduced by sixty thousand. So we ended up with like thirty seven thousand dollars increase this year thirty seven. But there's still another sixty thousand. It could have been ninety eight thousand dollar total to the town of Sunderland. Our bill would have been ninety eight thousand dollars. Yeah more than we paid last year. Um, so with the use of $204,000 from retained earning, um, we will pay $37,000 more this year, but there's still another $60,000 um, that we're gonna work on over the next couple of years. So when, when the, if I could, Mr. Chair, when the director was in here, those aren't directly related to increases in overhead. No. Actually the budget the budget say state the budget's flat. So the assessment formula hasn't changed. No. Nope. It's the number of runs. Uh the number of runs are going up. But mm -hmm. when when it costs one point it approximately costs one point one million dollars around South, South County EMS. Right. Yep. Uh we estimate um, about five hundred thousand dollars, give or take, um, that we get paid to us. That's 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 what we estimate as our revenue. Mm -hmm. So we have to make up six hundred thousand dollars. Got it. The towns for town assessment. Got it. So Deerfield is like. Three hundred and something thousand. Sunland's two hundred and something thousand, or one hundred ninety-eight thousand, and Whiteley would be the the remainder. Hundred and change. Yes, sir. So that sounds like FY twenty. Just looking ahead, is going to be significantly higher again. Um. Or do you have similar reserves to apply? For we'll have we'll, we'll have we'll have reserves to apply. So we we've been we've been right now we've been very cautious how we. Uh, conservative how how we uh, budget our earnings you know what we budget for earnings so we haven't we haven't jumped because we were very the last couple of years we've been worried what with if they repealed Obamacare and such what would happen 
you know, people less likely to have insurance or whatever. So we really didn't know. So we are very careful what we did when we looked at the number, when our, our revenue that comes in. So we still, we still have looked closely at that. Um, so it's kind of like, so we didn't, we didn't have three or five years worth of window to look at. We're right. just getting there now. Right. So now we're starting to get more at, and, and it's amazing. Actually, it's amazing. Um, some of the, some of the numbers really were were easy. We thought were easy to estimate, and those have been the most some of the most difficult numbers mm -hmm. to salary wise. It really hasn't changed. Salary wise is pretty much on schedule. If you look at all the incidentals, you know, and if and if you went to look at if you went to look at the budget, like like at the end of the there's a, a relic relicensing line item, and there's like three or four thousand dollars in that, and you would and you would say well. If you look at it right now, there's still three thousand, four thousand dollars in that line item, because nothing happens for the relicensing until the end of April. So we carry that money for about a chunk of the year. Yeah, but we're getting better. Yeah. But but so if if next year, you know, with this thirty seven thousand dollar increase, right. we're that much closer to being up to the hundred percent paying for it. So just to, uh, what Tom was talking, I grabbed the EMS budget, and it is effectively a hundred thousand dollar shift from the use of projected revenues to assessment. Correct. And of that hundred thousand, we're about thirty six percent. And you can see the initial assessment originally revenue from other services retained was 380 380 and then you had a bump of 755 which was a real you're pulling that down to 734 and then this year 704 and now that you're starting to see real numbers real data backfilling that as the service has got some legs under it now if i could mr chair mm -hmm. it's a very interesting question peter because if, if, if we didn't if we didn't in the beginning if we didn't have the um the grants we we got we received quite a few grants in the in state and federal grants in the beginning. Um, it, you would have seen a totally different budget, and that and that's both good and bad because we really never looked at. And I I personally believe that when you add a new program like South County EMS, I mean we always had the ambulance, but now we got a, it's a different level of service. We should try. It, it should actually be funded in that budget. Well, we've never been we've never been asked the town through South County or us to actually fund South County EMS to 100 percent, but it's a new service. Hmm. So we've got so we're taking on that hundred ninety eight thousand dollar expense, and through retained earnings or whatever we've been we've been dealing with it for the last three or four years, paying for it. But really, theoretically, we should gone back and asked the town for a two and a half override to pay for it because that was above that two and a half percent right. levy capacity. And that, that would have been a, a more complicated way to do it. But really, if we had a program, we should be paying for it. So that's a long answer to your short question. <laughs> <laughs> So the next big nut is schools. Well, let me yeah schools. You know our total our total education piece is two hundred and forty eight nine forty, an increase. Again, that's spread across all of education, and as as Peter pointed out rightfully so, you know not not to be the driver uh, exclusive driver of this of this growth. We've we've had that conversation about education components. And the next actually is, I guess, the only other piece that could be construed as a new initiative um, is under insurance. Under, with the opportunity here of transferring, and those letters have gone out to uh, both, um, both of our representative labor pools, police and teachers, as well as notification to the retirees, uh, retirees, retirees, sorry. And then uh, to uh, Hampshire Trust, uh, the wheels are turning now to transfer our uh, health insurance coverage from Hampshire Trust to Maya. 
with that with that said, um, I wish Francis was here because he and he was one who was an advocate for um, you know how how can we how can we help uh, staff um, control some of their costs. Uh, and this this right here is an increase of about forty nine thousand dollars in um, coverage the town's going to pick up, uh, but it also changes the town's percentage proposed budget changes the town's percentage of contribution by increasing it five percent to a sixty percent match as opposed to fifty five for the same plan, and that's you know opportunity timing I think more than anything, and that's again. So what if, what if, what have been the increase got? Um, if we didn't do this, that's a that's a really good point, Tom. Uh, the increase the town. I've been looked back more. a couple of sheets. The increase the town was uh, equal to or greater than this. I'm gonna figure that out here in a couple minutes. The sheet, but the increase to the individual uh, participants uh, was going to be significant in their. So it was going to be a co-pays. Yeah, and the yes, that and went up quite a bit. Anywhere from a 4.1 to a 4.9 percent increase in the premium to the employees, plus additional out-of-pocket costs. Wait, going to the emergency room would cost you a lot more. 500, I believe. Is this this one here? That's, That's capital. capital. Yeah, we almost threw that one away. But Tom, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a good point. We're going to be in a position to answer the questions on this is capital. That's well, I think it's here. important that you that, that you you know what the value is because it's not correct. Like it was an arbitrary increase. You know, right. just that we right. decided we're going to go sixty percent instead of fifty five. That's what I got. Here. It would have been much higher on the under the Hampshire one. Let's see if I got something under this paper clip that passes muster here. That's not that. So I have the out of pocket. I have the out of pocket changes that are here. When I want to get to the premium increases, because it makes for a radically different plan. Um, Was this the one? Yeah. I have to go back and look. The out of pocket changes were from. Things like uh, fifteen dollar visits to five, twenty dollar visits, uh, in network visits from fifteen dollars to forty dollars. This would be out of pockets again. Oh, I got it right here. There we go. Right, same one. Right. Yep. And we're, like we're looking for the numbers for the impact if we stuck with Hampshire Trust, but uh, we can, we can make sure to have that answer. Um, Emergency room visits went from seventy-five to one hundred dollars. Inpatient went from zero to five hundred. Surgical day went from zero to two fifty. Uh, imaging, testing, MRI, etc., went from zero to one hundred dollars. Uh, the tier-based prescriptions went from ten twenty-five to forty-five to one hundred, two hundred. And then the tier-based prescriptions by mail went up incrementally, 25 to 20, 20 to 25, 50 to 75, 90 to 165. But the umbrellas were the big nut, where currently there isn't one, and uh, the new umbrella would be 11 grand. So someone working at the library who participated in this could you know, have a, a quick $11,000 out of pocket somehow. And we don't have to have that with this, this if this passes. That's all. Good point. Uh, so, with um, if we stayed with the uh, there's the gift one half mile. Yep, that's the one. If we stayed with two twenty nine, just one second. Uh, we were going up. It was an. It was going to be an increase. Hampshire, Chicago, Hampshire rates. Make sure I get it right. At sixty. We would have had uh, we would have had Tom this increase right here and plan changes the increase we see in the budget of the forty nine it's forty eight and change forty nine to three we would have seen an increase of that and then the plan changes on the participants by making this move to Maya we have the same level of increase we increase the town's percentage by the five percent and we. Nix all the plan changes. Well, I think that I think I, I, make sure that I, I think that's that important one, to one try. Set of talking points versus yeah, going through I, ten right, pages. But I, think, yeah. but I think that's a good point to bring out. I mean, so when you look look at it, um, you you are going to still see no matter what we did. If we did, if we if we stayed the course, if we stayed at fifty five percent match, 
with, and, and we stay with the Hampshire Group, we would have had increased increase. payments for our, right. our employees, right. plus we'd had to seen the same number of effects in the budget. Correct. Yep. So, I think that's I think that's an important concept. Yeah, we have to have that as a, as a point. I wrote down enrollment numbers, but trips in the right plan model. In the end, we end up coming out. Like four thousand uh, dollars. There, there is no change in the current coverage with this budget. It stays the same as it no is. No change from what? From uh, the no existing. existing. Yeah, coverage. no change from the existing. The the changes that I read off, Peter, that they, they're they're not happening. So all those copay increases, which the Hampshire plan was planning for FY nineteen. Correct. They were they were doing a raise in the base plus plan I change. I thought I thought what you got from Maya mm -hmm. said to match the Hampshire plan. The existing Hampshire plan. coverage, okay, so but the, not copays. Yeah, the, okay. we wanted to match today's plan, not the proposed, not the proposed changes. Okay, I wasn't clear on yep. that. Yeah, uh, yep. Okay, because that's a big deal. Because those copay increases. Are it's big. yeah, they are they are big, and and again, I want to I want to uh, call Francis's you know call everybody's attention to something Francis said a number of years. You know, how is it that we can help staff each and every time? Go ahead. I'm rough on this one, but does the MIIA plan includes mm -hmm. really large deductibles? Nope, nope. No. It's, it, no. it's today's plan. Okay. And then. And it's today's it's care. Same Blue Cross, Blue yeah. Shield. And, right, same yeah. base. And there was provider. just some conversation at the last school committee meeting that I wanted mm -hmm. to touch base on. It was the whole union would have to agree, or how would it affect? Just yeah. So. Sunderland. Right. So the Sunderland, the participants, not not the high school, because they're not. Sunderland employees, the elementary school and the organized labor at the elementary school at the police department have to vote to accept the changes and we have to notify retirees of changes. So essentially they're voting to accept a plan that is going to continue the same co-pays. Yes. So the town is not saving anything by raising the copays. Correct. Mm -hmm. And it's going to increase the town contribution, thereby lessening the union members' contribution. <coughs> Correct. Right. They'll have a savings. So from their point of view, they're getting a savings because they're only paying 40% instead of 45. That's correct. And no increase in the copay. So it ought to be a no brainer to get them to agree. Right, That's because correct. you're getting a 5% benefit in terms of what we're picking up. Not, it's not a like better here, but you lose it over here. No, it's right. better here right. the same over here. Where with the other plan, we would have to negotiate with them for the savings. Right. 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 This one seems a lot more straight. They get a, for, I think the mm -hmm. teachers get twenty five percent of the first year state savings. Right. Right. It's a much more clear savings for, for those individuals. And it, it's it's a it's a great uh, series of questions regarding um, the opening up of this element of the labor agreement to take to the table uh, from the town's position to say, actually, we want to keep the same plan and we want to switch carriers and use the savings that we would use the increase that we would we were going to see anyway and change it, our contribution by 5%. Your contribution goes down by 5%. And, and there's another benefit in there, too, that is not recognized in the terms of cost, because if the underlying carrier had changed, that could cause havoc in terms of what kind of yeah. doctors you could see and everything. Right. So that that is unchanged. In, 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 a, in, a, perf in a perfect world, as described by the Maya rep, uh, you are going to be contacted by Maya. You're going to fill out the same Blue Cross card. You're going to get a new card same in the mail, changes. and you're going to see all your same people without any changes. Right. I just another point on the budget um, I wanted to make is twelve thousand dollars of that increase is for uh, the town share for the Deerfield employees. Right. And I think there's another little piece in there, like $187. Oh, the total health care. Yeah, right. the total. Right. Oh, and we also included two additional uh, family plans because we have people that right. jump on mid-budget season. Yes. So, so we, right. add, we added some capacity in case someone shows up yeah, and wants to enroll. Yeah, so we got a lot of bang for our buck with that right. $49,000. Well, that's a great point. Increase. We did, because you look at like the numbers here, like the 
if you look at the old plan at 55%, it was 228,443, 42. Mm -hmm. And then you go to the 60% under the Maya, it's 274,379.72. So we managed to benefit our employees and save money right. all at the same time and not change anything essentially for them. So that's, that's kind of a rare opportunity. Well, I, I would like to add that insurance is still going up $49,000. Yeah. Has, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not <laughs> right. like, it, it's not like it's a wash on the, the budget side, but <coughs> you right. still have, you still have to come point. up with 49, you still have to come yep. up with 49. Yep. Also, uh, one other uh, the benefit that she mentioned that the that I thought was uh, relevant since that uh, I guess it was three or four years ago we had an increase a Hampshire seventeen percent or something right yeah yep. it was was really a large amount mm -hmm. and with Maya uh, there is an actual uh, a cap uh, there's no increases in annual and uh, annual uh, costs. Uh, over 11.1%, 11, which still seems like it can be a large amount, but it's allowing a cap. Right. And Better than 16%. Exa exactly. You know, right? and, and that's, I mean, that's a 5% difference, and that's that's almost an entire year's worth. And when we're talking about, you know, the maximum increase after the first year tending to be around 46 right. for us, I mean, that seems about average in terms of what the market is, is doing right now. So how did it sound great? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Amherst has just uh, joined, so the pool's getting larger. Oh, that's good. Um, Warwick is also leaving the trust and coming on, so there's some moving around now, mm. and all those things will, will make that. a difference. Yeah, that's good. Right. Anything else on that second page there? Or? On the oh, second, page. the only other piece we see on the expense budget that jumps out is the shift of electricity back to the treatment plant. And again, that's that's based on uh, the cost moving across this spreadsheet from town building and generation electricity back to West wastewater treatment plant. And, but that's paid by the users also. It is. Right. And that was, that was a, and you're absolutely right, that was an area of concern when it was included in the schedule in the formula for they did. They still did right. pay from it. Right. It was just, and again, that's what needs to. I mean, and sometimes it's difficult because you see an expense, but you have to look at: Do you have offsetting revenue? Mm -hmm. Right. And there's offsetting revenue for that thirty-two thousand dollars. Exactly right. Oh. I have to recalculate the contracted services that runs on a calendar year. That's why that's highlighted. I haven't adjusted that yet. This is a year where they have a, an increase that allowed to yeah. them. Yeah. And the other um, thing that I'm still working on is out of district tuition. We have two students who are going to Smith. I don't. I haven't been notified of any others, um, so I'll, I'll double check that. And there was a slight increase in the transportation rate for those two students. I think it went from. 65 to 67.50. Sherry, if I could ask you, two new students or two students? Two students, they're not there new ones. Yeah, no. Right, they're they, still out of district. The question is, has yeah. the cost from Smith gone up? Right, or are there any new students going? Got it, okay. You know, planned for fiscal year 19. I got it, I got it. Yeah. Right. Just to finalize that. Well, I just saw fifty thousand dollars added to the budget when she said two students. Yeah, so I thought, right. Oh, God. No, no, oh, no. no, there's more. <laughs> right, no, just the two. Okay. Plus, right. I don't know what the rate is for this year, so. I can't All that's still like kind of, of pending. The, right. One of the reasons Franklin Tech was up was because of an increase in enrollment. students. Yeah. If you look at their, their operating budget growth is 2.8%, and we just have more people going. Right. That's just... It's a direct cause and effect. just enrollment. That can come off next year if two kids graduate. Exactly. Yeah. So if I may, Mr. Chair, hmm. did, did the school committee discuss their budget at last your last meeting? Oh, we did okay. at length. Um, unfortunately, FCAT didn't show up, so uh, I was gonna say, uh, oh, we don't have a two and a half, we had a two and a half hour meeting, most of which was about the budget, uh, <coughs> and, um, how should I was say, I mean, the executive summary would be after two and a half hours, we basically voted to approve the budget as it was prepared, that cuts to the chase. Yeah. Um, along the way, uh, couple things I'd point out. One was um, 
basically a statement from the principal, who I think is a pretty straight shooter, um, that there's no fluff in the budget. Yeah, I mean, if he's, if he's ordered to cut something, he will cut something, but it's, you know, it's not like, okay, yeah, we don't need, we don't really need this or something like that. I mean, it's, that's just, again, that's his point of view, but I respect his point of view. Um, the vote was unanimous. Um, there was, I had expressed I took some time expressing both a sense that I felt over here that if it was possible to make, you know, some reduction, even, you know, not a huge one, that would be uh, certainly welcome. Um, I actually proposed three different small things, but, you know, sometimes you propose something and then you get the details of, you know, I've learned, I know a whole lot more about the budget than I knew three months ago. Yep. but. You know, and I, and I and I know a good bit about it, but I will be the first to say that there are all sorts of, you know, little ins and outs of, of, of what actually happens in the real world that, um, you know, is still lots of learning to be sure. done. But so there were a couple of cases, it was like, you know, one very small amount, I mean, we're only talking 1500 bucks, and it was like, well, okay, I guess we could go see if the PTO can raise the money or something like that. And at that point, it's like, you know, you don't want to start off if that's your position of sort of right. like, okay, we're right from the, from the get-go, we're going to see if we can dump more stuff on the PTO because, you know, they raise about, I mean, their budget for the year for raising stuff, for adding, you know, interesting stuff for the school is to try to raise around 10 grand. Right. Mm -hmm. okay? And they managed, I think it was 10 or 11 they did last year, just to give you a sense of what it is. Mm -hmm. And they work real hard to do that. And then that's used for stuff that, you know, not part of the school budget, but it adds to the, you know, overall uh, just for the, being a good school. The quality of life. Just just being a good school, you know, yep. and doing yep. some stuff that you hope you could do, but, you know, you just don't want to feel like you should put it in the budget. Uh, there was another item that I, uh, you know, one of the things that I used to complain about on the finance, not complain about, I used to, it used to bother me. <laughs> bother me when I was on the finance committee was the way we, we deal with finances for the school, which is sort of different than we do with the town. Right. Uh, with the school, we basically give a bottom line. Okay. And I know you've even split out the transportation here on a separate line item. But from the point of view of looking at the budget, really it's just one number because that's, I mean, that's the reality of it. And then the school has got the flexibility to adjust as the year goes on. Um, and also, it, it therefore has sort of the assumption that it's going to live within whatever the number is given. Right. So that if you look back over the history, I'd say that the number of cases where it's come back for additional funds is pretty small compared to, let's say, the parts of the town government, non education parts of the town budget, where um, where, where that's treated differently. It may be treated differently from the sense that you have, uh, you know, where you have, you know, you try and plan as good as you can, but things right. happen. Right. Okay, and then I look at parts of the town government where things happen as a routine, and one, so one example is the highway department. Okay, because who knows what the winter weather is going to be like. Good point. Yep. So what do you do? You have this way of dealing with the snow and ice budget. Yep. Okay, and whether you deficit spend it or whether you just keep adding, whichever way you handle the accounting, the fact is some years it's going to cost more to keep the roads clean than it is other years. Right. You have no way of knowing. So you say, we just got to be flexible and we've got to just deal with it when it comes. And we don't tell the highway superintendent, sorry, it's February, you used up your money, don't plow the roads for the yeah, rest of right. the yeah. They can't do that. But the school, it's sort of like, figure it out. You guys are, you know, big boys, you've got a big staff, you know, figure it out. Um, likewise, uh, you know, what I'm getting at is that there are a lot of uncertainties going on in the school year, the first of which is the whole issue of bed costs, right. special education. Okay. Yeah. And there are uncertainties because, number one, you're not sure who's going to walk in the door each year and what sort of problems they're going to bring. Okay. And the problems they bring can be incredibly expensive. Okay. And you don't know. 
okay? And you gotta deal with it best you can. Now, we don't have, if I think another place in the town budget where there are unexpected things that can happen and you look and see how do we deal with it? One of the unexpected things can happen, like bad things can happen. You know, you got a cruiser that gets in a wreck, but you carry insurance, okay? You got a building, something happens to the building, you carry insurance, okay? I don't think there's any insurance, like if, gee, your spend costs go up. You do get some reimbursement in some situations for some part of it from the state or other places, okay? But, you know, it covers, you know, some percentage that's not that big a percentage. And, but so it's you're not still to, sort of. Yeah. It's not to the. It's not to the next year. And it's often not to the next year. So, year. so you have you still have to live through it for a year. You still got to live through it for a year. Now, you know the, the problem is, you know, how do you do honest budgeting in all of this? You don't. Okay. How do you do honest budgeting? How do you find the right spot? Okay, where you, you know, you want to. You're doing the best you can for making estimates about what you're going to need to run the program just the way you're running it, okay? But you don't know what your demands are gonna be next year. You know what most of them are gonna be, but you don't know what all of them are gonna be, okay? And so, you know, I look at, to give you an example, one of the things that I was questioning was an expense, uh, uh, geez, I can't remember what it was for now, but, got some whatever. but the point being that it was like, well, we've been paying for this someplace else and now it ought to have its own line item. And I said, fine. If that's the case, wherever, whatever was paying for it before ought to be cut by the same 6000 because now it no longer has to pay for this. Right, you are okay. setting it. That to me is like obvious. But the problem is the real world situation is more like the following, and that is that it was one of these places where there's special ed costs, okay? And so, like in this, you know, in, the, uh, in most, in many years or something, yeah, they have a number in there for a, a, a section of special ed costs, and, the, and, and they hope to be able to fund this 6000 out of that, you know, because that's one of the places where they, they estimate, you know, maybe a little higher than average because you don't know what a bad year is going to cost you. Sure. And so usually most years there's something left over, they can take it out of there. But then, you know, okay, the word from the special ed director is, you know, and this is for special ed programs during the summer. Yep. So you know after two or three months in the fiscal year where they got enough money, any money left over to pay for something else. Well, you know, she said, I'm not sure about this coming summer. It looks like we're going to be using up, you know, most of that. So that's why there's something like, yeah, if you cut this out of the budget, you're really cutting it. You're not just, I mean, if you don't put this increase in, you're not going to get the money from some this other place where you normally got it from. And so, you know, it's not as easy as it sounds. Sure. Okay. Uh, the third area I suggested was there is a new um, uh, food service director. Hmm. Okay. Now, to me, it's a, I don't know all the details of the history, but there was first a consultant hired at a early, you know, high rate. Hard and, enough, yeah. you know, this, again, I don't know the details. And then there was a food service director. And the school lunch program is supposed is runs through a revolving fund. Okay. And it's supposed to be a balance. Right. Okay. Self-sustaining. Self-sustaining. Right. Right. And there's, uh, you know, there was a question about, you know, there were apparently some problems with that, you know, not uh, avoiding running the deficit. There were problems with the quality of the food. There were problems with collecting from people, whatever, whatever, whatever. There were changes made. Uh, what I'm getting to from budget point of view is that when this food service director was hired sometime last fall, there was an agreement by the boards of the, of the school, by the school committees of the five schools that they were going to pay this person through like a normal central office employee rather than through the school lunch revolving fund. So suddenly here in the budget, suddenly and shit, it's something like seven grand to pay this person and I'm saying hold it we got to take this and put it back to the school lunch program because if they're any good they, you know they've replaced somebody else okay and if they're any good then they ought to be able to run the program and run the program at a balance including their salaries well except the fact that now we've got five pounds all of the green that's all been set up to undo it is something like you got to be kidding me okay <laughs> and so all I could say is my intent is at some point to find some other way of taking something that might not normally be considered a school lunch expense, like 
you know, some part of the maintenance cost attributable to, you know, like the, it, it, like it would have been the, an easy one would have been the electricity to do with the cafeteria, the cafeteria, which wouldn't have been considered part of the school lunch cost, but it is. You know, maybe yeah. some maintenance cost. I don't know what, but I'll come up with something. Right, to okay. offset that. But I can't, you know, it hadn't happened yet. Okay, yeah. and that'll take some time. And so, therefore, basically, that one got, you know, my idea there got killed. So I was I, I was batting zero for three. Um, <laughs> Can I run up for just a sec? Sure. Uh, I want to go back really quickly to the, uh, the SPED thing you mentioned. I just want to ask... Uh, you said that this fed the the cost for that seemed to have been going up. It has the I remember last year that they had estimated that they were gonna have an influx of choice in because of the specific SPED program right. that they were estimating was gonna offset uh, some of the increase. Has, did that did that not get met or we, was that the, the thing what happens when you've got choice, okay, you get five grand per kid and then you get uh, a uh, the term they use is sped increment. To me, it's just that the uh, state reimburses, basically charges the sending town for the sped costs of a uh, sped student that comes there under the choice program. So if you look at the school choice, uh, revolve, it's not a revolving fund, but if you look at the school choice income for this year, it's going to be roughly 200,000, I mean, I think it's 40 kids or 41 kids, so it's roughly 200,000 just for the five grand part, but it's another 190,000 for the special ed part, okay? So we're really getting just about 10 grand per kid, per kid coming in, okay? Because, you know, that reflects, I mean, it, you know, it reflects a similar situation to, I don't have the numbers, but if you looked at the cost per kid for, uh, you know, across the school, the spent costs are huge. Right, well, right I was going to say, because the regular cost for the pupil is what, was around 13, about 13,000. 13, yeah. And I want and I have still to get, coming up short. I have to get those numbers because I, you know, I believe that 13 is, is low for the district. It right? is, it okay? is. And it's low compared to other towns around. Yep. Okay. And yet, from what I can tell, we got a really good elementary school. Yeah. Okay, so that, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, at that point you sort of say, well, gee, you know, why is your budget so high? You know, and yet you say, gee, our costs are low per kid and our quality of the school seems to be real good. And, you know, and that's with the fact that we have, you know, what you would uh, euphemistically call a school with, you know, different demographics than some of the other towns, you know, around because, you know, of the... Just again, it's the demographics. So, sure. um, you know, it, it, it all makes it hard not to crack. Um, and so we ended up uh, basically, yep, let's, you know, let's go for this. Now, my other concern um, is, you know, we talk about honest budgeting. We also, part of honest budgeting is doing stuff, you know, trying to look about what's the long, you know, what's the considerations out a couple of years or more. Good point, yep. Okay, as opposed to just this year, you know, let's get through. I mean, some people think of budgeting as we get through this year or and we done. worry about next year when next year, <laughs> you know, next year comes and so on. And, you know, there was a discussion well, here can, last can, year. Can I just stop you right there? Yeah. That's how we, that's how the, actually a conversation started back with the finance committee. The, the comment was, well, there's free cash. You should use your free cash first. Right. That's taken that approach. Right. But I, you know, the problem is. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, and, and we got, we got the money this year, free cash, stabilization, whatever. So use that money, use that money and. Right. You're all done. Worry about, away. worry about next year. Cause why would you ask your boss for $300,000 just in case? Well, isn't it kind of a matter of where you have that just in case? I mean. Isn't there any, I don't know, I... Let, I let, me, let, me, let me just sort of, can I interrupt this detour? We come back to that just because well, I'm going to figure yeah. out what I'm going to say. So, okay. what's, you know, uh, basically what I was just wanted to, to sort of uh, uh, touch on again, because I think the, ratio, the issue was raised here last year when they presented a budget and it had the school choice at the end of the year being down to pitch. Mm -hmm. Okay, which meant, you know, what you've gone, and I don't know, I don't have the history myself, but it's over a small number of years, and it's all recently, where you've gone from 
school choice being used fully a year later to school choice being used in the same year, mm -hmm. which right. means that over a small number of years, the you've been taking more than a year's worth of school choice, okay, each year in order to make the budget work. Absolutely. And I believe there was discussion at this time last year because the projections looked like you were gonna make it through the budget you were dealing with at this time last year, but then the following year you were gonna get stuck because you basically were emptying out school choice. Right. right. Okay. What happened apparently was that the projections, uh, the revenue uh, ended up uh, a fair bit higher and the use of uh, the school choice funds ended up a fair bit lower. And so that problem, again, was it kicked down the road? I don't think it was structurally solved. I think it was just kicked down the road a year you know, I've been trying to determine, is there any reason to, you know, should we expect that the same sort of thing will happen, that the uh, revenues will come in higher than we expected, uh, and that the rep and the uh, expenses will be lower? And it's like, I, I'm not putting any money on that one. So I'm concerned about where we are sitting here this time next year. Sure. Now, you know, that... Yeah, we like to budget that way, but sometimes that sort of loses out. So that when the other thing I suggested was that, yeah, there is some uh, money in uh, that we're taking out of school choice for the cost of instructional aids. And I said, can that be reduced? And after, you know, we probably talked about that one for 20 minutes or something like that. And I sort of, at the end of that, I sort of hung my head. I said, I guess I struck out on this one too, because there were good reasons why the numbers were what they were. Uh, now, you know, push comes to shove, like uh, the principal said, you know, he'll, you know, he'll salute and, you know, cut, but right. he shouldn't want, he shouldn't want to. And like, again, like he said, there ain't no fluff in here. You know, part of the reason he said for uh, instructional aid expenses up was if they had the opportunity to get an aid that was, you know, cost them, I mean, aids don't get paid much anyway. So we're talking right. to someone getting paid you know, 20 versus someone getting paid 20 or three or 24, and he would grab the one for 23 or 24 because it meant they've got a good bit more experience, okay, and are gonna do a good bit better job in the classroom, and you know, he sure as heck could notice the difference. Um, you know, I didn't feel at that point like it's appropriate to say, no, no, go back and hire the ones that aren't any good. Um, <laughs> But this is, you know, so, so it's, 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 it's so we come back, if you want the big picture, I still come back to, we seem to have a real good school that we like to keep that way. Right. We seem to be doing it with cost per student that's on the low end, okay, with a student body that is more challenging than, 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 than a bunch of our peers. And, you know, that's, you sort of look at it and say, Jesus, they're doing a good job. And, you know, the problem is, How's the town pay for all this? And you know, I, I don't have the answer to that other than well, you know, it's, whatever. But it's it's uh, it's, it's, it's I'm just trying to give you a sense of we spent two and a half hours talking about this stuff. But well, that, that's what I was saying. Think of the work that you have to put into to come to that understanding. Right. And it's very easy for somebody to look at numbers and make off the cuff comments and uneducated comments about it. But you really need to dig into it. I spent hours and hours and hours going through this stuff. Okay, well, and. Looking for every time I think I got the magic bullet where we're going to, you know, yeah. whatever it turns out. No, you know, it's not so easy. It's not like, you know, first time anybody's thought of this stuff. And, and uh, right. uh, the business manager over there is, um, she's no dummy. Okay. She, she, she got good smarts about all this stuff. And one thing actually that they're putting in uh, that is going to go online uh, first of July, beginning of the fiscal year, is a, is a, fully online purchase order system, okay, that they haven't had, and they therefore have always had trouble tracking really what's in accounts because stuff that had already been ordered doesn't get actually booked in the account until the stuff arrives, the bill gets paid, you know, whatever. It's like sure. two, three months later, and so the principal was saying, yeah, you know, he's calling up the business office to try and find out if he's got some, enough left in the account to, you know, buy something, it was whatever. It's, I mean. Probably, I think this is going to make it better management. Right. Okay. Whether it actually saves any money is another issue. But right. these kind of things that you know, yeah. sometimes you do things because they say. Ideally, you do things because they save money and they're better management. But even if you just get better management, that's worth doing. Right. Points. The uh, 
it's interesting. Such with two and a half in new growth this year, our our ability to pay our revenue increases by one hundred and sixty two thousand dollars. About now, there's three things in our budget that we don't have a lot. Insurance goes up is going up forty nine thousand dollars. Didn't matter if you used the plan that we're on now or Maya, it's going to go up forty nine thousand dollars. Okay, the ambulance is going up thirty seven thousand dollars. $70,000 increase in Franklin County Tech because we have two additional students this year. That's $156,000. So in three line items, and, and so now you look at all our budgets line items, we have our ability to pay in those three line items that we, I mean, we, we cannot not have insurance for people. That's against the, Against the law, we wouldn't get anybody to work for us. Um, we we could um, not have the ambulance service, but there was uh, two hundred and something calls made to Sunderland last year alone, and we know that our, the way we did it before, Bobby Ahern and, and Mary Ellen and a few other uh, are getting a um, little bit older. They couldn't still be able to do, I mean, we basically had maybe four, five, six EMTs that were making all the calls, so it was unsustainable. So your choices are you have to hire somebody or you go in the ambulance. And, and Franklin County, Texas has two additional students this year for 75, and that wipes out our entire new growth. Those, those three line items that we, and, and we can't deny our kid, you know, children go to Franklin County Tech or to Smith Tech, really. If, they, if Smith Tech, if Smith Oak offers a program that Franklin County Tech doesn't, we pay, we pay a uh, yeah, so retail plus that. transportation yeah, yeah. Yeah. Out, out of district. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you can't. So right there is our new growth. So any other any any pay raise for employee. Um, Additional expenditures um, to, to maintain the security of our of our, our uh, computers in here, we wouldn't be able to pay for them. We can't pay for those. That's what it comes down to. Just three items. So so some so you ask, people ask, well, but we have we have free cash. We have a little bit, but I. I, I mean, we could, everything that we see here could be replicated again next year. We don't have, and, and some people want to go until that happens. As, as actually, if I could, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, mm. to Tom's point, you know, we are we have not since certainly, I mean, probably even since you've been uh, participating in the budget process, Peter, the town has not hoarded free cash in any way, shape, or form. We use it. We use we use a percentage of it every single year formulaically, and this year the current revenue projection um, is to use one hundred and sixty thousand two hundred and eighty four dollars of free cash, just to fund the difference in the budget. Right. Uh, the difference in the, the difference in revenue and expenses, even with those revenues and expenses, we're still talking about one hundred and ninety one thousand one hundred one in uh, structural deficit right now. And that'll lead to our override discussion. No, I don't, Kevin, Scott, I don't think all the years I've been, in, you know, looking at the town's finances, the town's operations, there's never been any doubt. About it. Both well run and doing it getting as most out of every dollar yeah. as I can yeah. no the, re the reason I used the time stamp was to say that you know from from I mean, I mean that's, from, we, that's we, from day one and honestly right. I mean I my wife and I we get the Amherst bulletin because they send it to us for free <laughs> and talk about a negative role model some of the things they do in that town <laughs> because, you know it's like you know this town is just well, you know I take this one any day yeah. in terms of how we run you know, I mean, it's just, uh, you guys run a, a good operation, and, and I think that, uh, you know, I mean, we have to spend money. Everybody, I get, you know, we spend money in the ambulance. Mm -hmm. Okay. I sure hope I don't ever use that ambulance, but if the time comes, the fact that it's there and it works properly and it responds quickly, is like, yeah, that's what you want. I sure hope we never use the fire department. 
But if you ever do... Well, they're like insurance policies. You yeah. hope you never tap into it, but if That's it, right. you want to know it's there when you need That's it. That's right. You hope you don't have to call the police, but if you do, you want to, you know, you want if, the police force where they know what they're doing. Well, and, if, I, if I could, <coughs> Peter, thank, thank you for bringing that up. Because we, we've had people uh, ask us yeah, before about why, why do you have 24-7 or, or attempt to have 24-7 police coverage and why do you got so many people on at different times? I just like to uh, read a press release that want that that will go off from Ch Chief Demacho, hmm. Dave yeah. Metropolis. Yeah. Chief uh, Dave Metropolis reports that Sunland Mass Police Department has arrested a man early Sunday morning. Early Sunday morning, when a lot of people say we shouldn't have anybody on duty, um, that was allegedly entered the home of a woman while she was inside. The gentleman um, talks about who is, but he was uh, arrested for multiple counts, including home invasion, armed assault and dwelling, breaking and entering at nighttime, malicious damage of personal property, A and B, assault and battery on persons over 60, larceny over or under $250. On Sunday around 1.40 a.m., Sunderland Mass Police Officers Peter Scoble, Benjamin Peters, who was one of our recent rate high, recent hires, was dispatched <coughs> home on Old Amherst Road for reported break and entering in progress. The woman reported that she heard someone enter her home and, and, their, and then hid with her son in a bedroom. She reported that the man rummaged through her home, eventually forcing his way into that bedroom. Seeing that the man was armed with a knife and fearing for her and her son's safety, she hit him in the face with a letter opener, injured, he left the room, but she wasn't sure if he had left the house. She gave dispatch a description of the res respond to the responding officers. Officer Scoble found the gentleman only a few yards away from the home and arrested him. That was what Sunderland Police Department one call that they had Sunday morning. That and and that that evening there was other multiple calls. People asked why do you have why do you have a police department? That's why. Okay. Um, why do you have a why you have an ambulance crew? Um, I, or the ambulance since since uh, South County EMS, there's the the biggest thing is you can have a stroke, you can have a heart attack, you can have a, a an injury. Um, the the a, a quick, rapid, educated, well man woman response saves lives. And we actually have documentation where people that had suffered a heart attack, they, they have whatever the machine is, would, they were able to put that on. The physicians at the hospital recognized something that needed immediate attention. So instead of taking to one of the local hospitals, the ambulance was diverted to Springfield. That individual today, one of six by the way, is having a normal life without being in a nursing home or rehab center for an extended period of time because we had that. Yes. Now, now, what what is the cost of that? What's the cost of having a police department? And, and Peter and Benjamin, thank you. Chief, what is the cost of having people like that on our staff? I, I don't, I, to tell you the truth, I think we, we pay, what, $15 a thousand? Damn, that's, that's cheap. And it's also pretty darn low that's, when that's you cheap. The... And, 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 are, and are we perfect? Hell no. Hell no, we're not perfect. We, we try to do the best we can. I've been known to make a mistake once in a while, every 20 years or so. When I ran for election the first time, that was the biggest mistake in my life. But That wasn't his wife's count, though. Yeah. <laughs> Those well, she, are always yeah, higher. She, but but how, how, how do you, how do you, you know, how do you quantify, how do you quantify, how, how do you quantify that? Okay, and, and, and you want to go to education? How, how do you, how do you look at, how do you look at a kid that, gra and, and, and damn, I think we, we have the luckiest, and, and it's there, it's there for you to look at, but you look at some of the kids that I, I've been fortunate enough to, to meet when, that grew up and went to Sunderland, um, 
or or one of the local schools graduated from Frontier, and we got people, you know, that that are working at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. We got cancer doctors down in North Carolina. We got engineers. We got good good electricians, good plumbers. What do you? How do you? We have good citizens. How do you put a value on that? Because you're going to pay two hundred dollars more a year, three hundred dollars a year more in taxes. It's it's a I, and again, I know every dollar counts, but I, I think you get more for your dollar. And just again, this thing happened the other day to that poor woman on Old Amherst Road. But fortunately, we had a police department. And I also like to thank the Massachusetts State Police for backing backing up our officers because we we only have we only can put so many officers on on duty at one time. And, and thank you for them and, and all the other departments that help. So I mean that's. Sorry, Mr. Chair, but I just, no, that's right. I, I think we do a lot of good things. And, 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 and I would say, if you want to see the value of education, talk to Ben, the principal, arrange to go in and sit in a classroom, sit in a third, day, third, day, third grade class and watch what happens during that course of the day and watch, watch those kids and what they learn. And I think you'd be amazed. And, and do I think there's, there, and, and, and you know what? Every kid, we, we have X amount of employees down there and, and there's 50 cars down at the elementary school. But you know what? Those 50 cars bring people, dedicated professionals that come into work that help our children every single day. And sometimes that kid may just need a little push or a little, little encouragement to get over a hump. And I don't think that's too much to ask. Well, if nothing else, look at your property values. They're up for a reason, you know. Did, did you have a... Um, I'm just curious, because I think one of the objections sometimes to the override is, mm. you know, well, you get money this year, you're going to want money next year, you know, or if we went back to the last override that failed, I don't remember which one that was. If, it was if 2009, wasn't it? I mean, if we had that passed, if we did the math with the 2.5%, would we have a budget problem this year? I mean, would, would that have solved the budget problems that we have had in the years since then? What was the amount of that? $768,000. So it probably would have, I would so suspect it would have helped a lot. Right. Because I, I think, <clears throat> well, and this kind of gets back to a point that you made earlier, Peter, and one that I made downstairs when we were talking about this in relation to the personnel committee is, you know, you can do it, you can squeak through this year, but I think it, it's, it would be irresponsible of us not to look out and to project out and just do what we can do and stick our noses down and take care of this year's. And, you know, and that's why we're looking at this, trying to prevent issues that come up, because otherwise you're going to basically hit a brick wall and you're going to have to make a, a tough decision to do something. And I think you... you Periodically, there's going to have to be a reset. You can never have, you can't put an arbitrary cap of a number, you know, whether it's two and a half percent, one percent, whatever, and say nothing can ever go up over this amount and don't ever expect it to. I mean, periodically, you're going to have to have some kind of reset and occasionally adjust it. And I mean, I think how many actual overrides have we passed since Prop two and a half went in? Going back like before, we had. A targeted capital stabilization one. We passed one in the mid '90s, and there was one right. There was one really early on. In the mid '90s, and that was a moment of desperation in the town finances. Right, and occasionally, and it's, you know, this isn't something that we expect to do on a, on a regular basis. It's a, just a periodic reset that you need to expect if you're thinking about things in a logical, fiscal, sound, responsible manner. And I, I think the other thing that gets left out of these. I mean, you. You've obviously taken a good step towards addressing it with the capital, the capital the planning, or the capital stabilization. stabilization. Yep. Okay. But I don't think the number you got there is that's not that's not a long term number that you need there. Okay. Well, it, it is short, right? Because it, it it kind of think like, oh yeah, it's way better than nothing, but it's still. If you just look at, I mean, it's a problem for every institution around here is how you take care of your property. Right. And um, it's expensive, okay? And, you know, ask any homeowner, I mean, mm -hmm. who, who, who prides their own, you know, takes pride in their own house. 
a lot of those that are taking care of it. Well, um, I mean, one thing I actually like, and I think Tom commented on this when we had the hearing here with the about the school budget, was that there's 15,000 added to our budget for building maintenance, okay, to try and just start doing a little more. Does that solve the problem? No, but it's like, you know, it's the old thing, if you're in a hole, the first thing you gotta do is stop digging. Yeah. This will help us stop digging, you know, and I think you've got a whole survey about to take place of, you know, of the town's buildings and so on, and that's gonna lead to a plan, and it's all fine to do the survey and to make the plan, but at some point you gotta figure out how you're gonna fund it. Right. And, you know, that's gonna be another challenge. And, you know, you do, I mean, the, you know, the usual steps are you look, you know, where else can we get help for paying some of these things? But at some point it comes down to, okay, what's the town share gotta to be to make this thing fly? And then how do we fit that into available resources? And that's just to keep things from falling apart. You know, and that's been, and yeah. that's when you're doing, and, and all of that is part of you guys being on top of things to realize that's part of your job that a lot of select boards don't even think about because it's like, you know, it's too damn expensive. But that's the reality of trying to maintain a town, maintain its infrastructure. Um, you got to deal with that stuff. And at some point you can be as smart as, you know, I mean, we, we hope you're as smart as possible, but it still costs money. It sure does. Even if you get somebody else to pay for a chunk of it, it still right. costs money. And, you know, that's coming too. That's a, that's a great tie to the one to the uh, North Main Street reconstruction. That's been a mm. decade in the making just to get to this point. Yeah. Right. right. So Tom said this more than once, you know, we're not going to go hat in hand to the town and say, okay, we need $2.3 $2. $2. $2. $2. $2. $2. $2. $2. $2. $2. million to right. do this. Like, oh, okay. So you participate in a program and it takes a decade and we spend a quarter of a million dollars in engineering and we get awful close, but that's where we're at. Good points, good points all the way around. So our operating, our operating, good Mr. Chair, our operating yep. gap right now is 191,101. Can I ask just a couple more questions that things just for information? Because yeah. they were increases that stuck out a little bit. And one was the Medicare increase. Mm -hmm. And the other was, I didn't know if there was any staffing change for the full-time officers at the police department or uh, yeah, they saw that one what too. the explanation for that was. Uh, the salary increases, this is the last year of a three-year uh, uh, table or step adjustment in the uh, police department. And that was uh, contract negotiated. So that, and Peter, you said you know, have you would just finish saying, you know, taking kind of the long, longer view. Mm -hmm. um, this uh, step adjustment at the police department recognized that we have really senior staff, and there was not a sufficient enough steps getting from the base to being really senior. So there's an overall the step process in here. Yeah, what we've done is actually added three more steps in the whole table so that new staff are gonna take longer to get the top step. And the Medicare increase? I, I, I can't speak to that one. I can a little yeah. bit that um, is more accurately reflects uh, the payroll costs. We've been running deficit in that account over the past couple of years, so Susan, um, looked into it a little bit further and made the adjustment so that um, hopefully this next fiscal year there won't be a deficit. deficit. But that just represents the not, not 1.45 percent town share of the the eligible wages. <coughs> yep. I, I'm just surprised that the number got that much out of whack. And, and we, we can uh, get back up for that. Yeah. Yeah. Deerfield. I don't get a better explanation. Change, right? The percentages have changed. Right. Debt. Medicare. Uh, expended last over expended last year by uh, eighty four forty seven with an, an increased request of so over expended last year by eighty four forty seven and then anticipating that growth this year adding ten that's where you get your eighteen two sixteen so it's going to be overspent this year too uh, it's potentially going to be overspent this year you're just taking a couple of years to realize this was a situation. Yeah, I have to get to actually the sheet itself. We've been Thank taking, you. we have some extra in the unemployment line and 
Moving it around. Moving it around. So we shouldn't lay anybody off? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just That's another way to look at it. It just offsets the unemployment line yeah. for the yep. upcoming year. It's, it's the, you know, the shifting. <laughs> right. Yeah. Try to make things work. The shifting sands. Yeah. Of, all right. Do we have any, because um, I know we also have to do warrants. Yeah. Tonight, right? big, with respect to with respect to the conversation around uh, override, uh, again, you know, we have uh, we're applying 160 plus thousand dollars to the operating budget, apply uh, from free cash, applying another 32 thousand to OPEB from free cash, a little bit to stabilization from free cash, and then moving free cash forward to the tune of about 160 thousand dollars. That's formulaic, and the nice part about being a formula is if free cash is up, the formula works. Free cash is down, the formula still works. works. It's yeah. still the formula. But again, that leaves us 191101 as of today, and the warrant is closed as of last Thursday. So the question about a ballot, ballot question, and uh, notifying the clerk about a value, I think is something we should be leaving here pretty soon with. And we got the stomach to go back to the public and say, well, you elect us to bring you a balanced budget. And we've done our best with uh, expenses and some expense growth we've pushed back on over the decades. Uh, and we need $200,000 this year. We asked for 300000 last year. We must look like heroes right now. We anticipated $300,000 in gap. Right? Mm -hmm. We're tweaking insurance coverage to keep the costs at bay. We could have, we could have taken those reductions uh, and saddled the staff, the participating staff of 64 employees those with those increases, but we chose not to. We chose to accept the challenge of using the same value of increase and making a commitment to those 64 individuals and families to uh, show the town's commitment to increasing our contribution and not affecting their coverage. I think that's serious. Yep. We're still saving money, too. And you're still and saving, still saving, saving money, money, right? This is not a Save bunch of money. for the end, but, but some. It's... So. And that's without even addressing the topic that right. Tom talked about, like how do you put a price on certain things? Sure. I mean, it's the price of civil society. Right. So of our of our you know one sixty and change, you know we have a budget increase of three hundred and eighty thousand dollars. That's after a slight reduction in debt, a little bit of uh, moving some of these numbers around, getting it back to the waste treatment plant, putting costs you know out of the energy piece, and uh, squeezing some of the savings out of the electricity line item, some salary requests. Uh, and that's where we're at right now. Grand total of uh, 8030115. Are you planning on deciding that tonight? I personally, I'm not, I'm like a needle stuck in a groove at some point. You gotta, you gotta, we're gonna have to get off of the pot and pick a number. Okay, but I should, yeah. you know, <laughs> know whether it's nice that night or, you know. Again, I, for me, for me, Peter, I'm gonna have it on the table in the form of a motion, but we're a board of three. I mean, we can only kick the can so far down the road. I'm glad we actually waited a week because it was 300 change last week, two weeks ago. We have to notify the clerk by April 2nd, so. I guess we're notifying, the, we're notifying the clerk this week because <laughs> I'm not here next week. Well, put a motion on the table, sir. Yep. So if I could, if I could, uh, Mr. Chair, make yes. a motion to notify the town clerk of uh, the request to increase uh, property tax rate above the two and a half percent by two hundred thousand dollars for discussion we have a second second yeah all right discussion um, time. I, advocating advocating my case you know we're we're elected to uh bring uh some measure of uh, responsibility to governing the as opposed to politics this isn't this isn't political noise these are your town services in a town in Western Massachusetts that has a property tax rate of a little over $15. This uh, proposal of $200,000 would add, what, 37 cents 
we'll get those numbers. I don't want to, everybody's going to remember the whatever I said, yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, it's, it's going to be an incremental increase uh, to cover this year's gap. And this year's gap is something that we've managed since 2009 when there was a $700,000 failed override. And we've squeezed our way to 2019. I think we need to have this uh, value. Um, and if the 191101, as we know, there's some contingencies in the budget like an additional uh, family signing up in case they sign up for health care. Not unlike what uh, Peter was describing earlier. Uh, that said, uh, we continue to buy down all of those debts that we'd incurred uh, over time. Uh, we had six, $628,000 of excluded debt in 2009. This year we have $250,000 of excluded debt. Those numbers have come, those have come straight off of the tax rate. Right. And it's important that people understand that. There's no such thing as uh, in Massachusetts having a tax rate of zero. However, there are plenty of communities around us that have considerably higher tax rates than us. And, yes. and with, a more diverse, with a more diverse pool. Well, that, that's right, because we've had a very, very tiny non-residential tax base. And I'm, I'm not arguing for high or low taxes. I'm arguing for the people in the community to pay for the services uh, that are being offered. And in this case here, respect the fact that our, our managers, our department heads have come forward with these requests. And again, like not, not, every, we have a question, and, and not everybody's happy about this. One of our members had a, uh, had a question about whether it's possible to tack a rider onto the motion. If there's any kind of precedent, uh, there was a question over whether the increase, if there can be an exemption to the increase, if the, the property owner is we, over 65 or something. Certainly look at those things. Yeah. And That'll be half the population, but yeah, and what would that yeah. do to the rest? The, of the other thing, obviously, that exists is the state program for they call it the circuit breaker yep. senior credit yep. for yep. if you're paying more than ten percent of your income in taxes. The yep. problem is there's no way of knowing how it affects any particular individual unless you pry into their finances, right. which is right. you know that's certainly you know not the way you want to go and. Uh, but, it, you know, and there would be people who have uh, essentially, you know, you could have three scenarios. You could have people who, uh, yeah, that's a great program, but there's a max of a little bit over $1,000 credit. And maybe because their income is really low and their property tax is high enough that they're already maxed out. Sure. And so it wouldn't help cover an increase like this. And then you get people on the other end for whom their income is a fair bit higher in relation to their property tax. So even if you raise the property tax by two, three, four hundred dollars, whatever it turns out to be for their particular piece of property, they still aren't up to the 10%. So they don't get any help because you gotta be up to 10%. But then there's a bunch in the middle that it would, who, who this either would get them over the limit. So some of it would be covered by the state or it would, they would be already in that uh, uh, window and so the state in effect would end up by the time they filed their state taxes uh, the following April they would get it all back or they might be almost having used it up the full thousand but they could still get the rest of that so it covers some of it but the problem is Who's helped? You know, you can't go up to, you know, you can't talk to the voter on the street and say, well, you know, right. give me all your financial information. I'll tell you if the state will cover it or not. It's right. just that, you know, I mean, it's been going on for a while and you can't imagine everybody's not taking advantage of it. But, you know, there may be some people this would be a new thing for or, or who knows what. Or certainly there, I can't imagine they're not a chunk of people, a good number of people for whom, yeah, they're getting some benefit of it. And um, this this state program would help offset any increases that would come along through an override. We could have an information sheet with three scenarios, right? right. Like if 
Yeah. But, uh, to, to, the, to the point I was making earlier, Sherry, had, uh, we had asked to have these calculations done. The $200,000 override is indeed a 57.57 uh, cent increase on the rate, uh, and that is based on the impact of, of a $200,000 home would be an additional $114.34. $200,000 proposition, two and a half override would add and people know this math they know it 0.57 cents 57 cents on the tax rate and, and sort of along those lines too the um pre-town meeting meeting that we're going to have at the library mm -hmm. um we'll have the board of assessors there so you'll be able to actually come in and find how that actually impacts your specific property yeah, those envelopes so, those envelopes should be in the mail today <laughs> on the way in yeah right, right. <laughs> so, so everybody's got their receipt from this year so if you want to see how it affects your specific property that's a great way to, to check it out and come down and do that More so, than I was going to say. You want to, uh, 200, so we obviously have a uh, gap in, in salaries for town employees that at last week's meeting or was it two weeks ago we talked about mm -hmm. yep. possibly doing a study and so we're kind of not addressing that until next <coughs> year Correct. Does this give us enough money to deal with that even next year when we may have the information and want to make adjustments in salary? Right. Is that where um, that's a under grant writing consulting? No, it's uh, an article on the town meeting warrant. So I'm not talking about paying for the consultant. I'm talking about paying for the salary increases next year. We need to know what they'll be. So yeah. the consultant will do the study. Well, that's my concern, though, is that we've kicked that can down till next year. But if we're going to ask for an override, well, should we have enough money in there to fund to hmm? potentially fund those salary increases? I think we've had we've had salary increases outside of requests uh, pretty consistently since 2009. So kicking the can, I'm not entirely sure, is an accurate an accurate uh, comment. But, but we've agreed not to address it until at least next year, uh, and we know there's some pressure there in terms sure. of salaries. Well, one of the things that we've actually we haven't agreed not to address it because one of the things normally we do a 2% COLA. Right. And one of the things that we suggested for, from the personnel committee is to do a 3% to help offset some of that while because we knew that looking at and the the difference between a 2% and a 3% is I believe is like 3 was it 3000? 3, yeah. 3000 or so um, because we knew it was going to take a little while to do the study. And we also wanted to look at, we discussed um, increasing the scope of that study really to look at all the positions and to see how they're affecting each other. So, so the short answer, Lauren, is uh, based on the library specifics request, we probably would have enough money next year to pay that request if everybody else stayed in two and a half. Just saying. But we've been talking about trying to get the, the salaries up to equity to some comparable towns, which, you know, Correct. and are we getting anywhere near that? You know, like, is it, I, I agree if the override doesn't fix, I know this is only one of your sure. problems, but if it doesn't fix the problems, maybe we should ask for enough to fix the problems. Mm -hmm. You raise a good point, as long as those are the problems. Again, it can be argued that turnover is, is an indicator of poor salary and poor benefits. We don't have high turnover. We right? also don't have to raise to, we don't, all, don't have to increase the budget. We don't have to go to the levy limit. So I guess the... That's a good point. Right, we don't have so, to go to the sorry, That was our point. That was our discussion okay. last year. Is we don't, you know, we're at, asking... We don't to, so, right. I mean, it just seems like when we know we have things on the table, mm -hmm that are pressures on the budget that we're not addressing right. and we're going to go for an override. I think, you know, it's going to be harder for me to be positive about the override sure. if I don't feel like we're looking ahead at least a year or two in terms of things that we know we're going to be looking, you know, okay, if you do the survey and it turns out Everyone's being overpaid. Then fine, we don't have a problem. But I, I'm guessing that that's not the conclusion. Can we reduce salaries? Can we reduce salaries? Yes, exactly. We'll cut. That's not the conclusion. <laughs> so I don't think I that'll. Think I don't think that'll be a finding. But yeah. Um, you know. I hear you about about the levy limit. If we if if there is a discussion, uh, the discussion at the table continues and the override request value uh, changes. You can always again, we're not asking the town to spend anything more than the budget that they're being presented right. at town meeting. 
Conversely, if that override, if any override fails, the reduction scenario is the next step. That's the other side of the coin because we don't have, outside of stabilization, we don't have $191,000 we can throw at this budget anticipating anything other than zero next year. So it's really important to bear in mind. And that was an issue, I think, with what happened with the proposed override for last year. That was part of what was included, and that's why it was actually, I think it was 350 and not 300. I thought it was 300. 300. 300. 300. And we've had that discussion in the past, too. Was, was, was the override votes, That was pretty close. Was it too much? <laughs> yeah. I hate, you know, we, 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 we've, had, we've had them fail by 70%, so, you know, 14 votes, I'll take. <laughs> I think that that... You're right, though. There's a tension between, you know, how much you ask for, um, for a, a structural reset in anticipation of future costs, which was our... our um, conversation or talking points last year. Well, if you only, you know, if you're, let's say even in an ideal world, mm -hmm. you only do this every 10 years. Sure. Or, you know, 20 years is obviously too too long. Right, true. But if you're aiming for somewhere around 10 years, then it's got to be enough of a jump that it mm -hmm. can actually fund you for those. Right. right cause otherwise, you are going to be back in sure. another couple of years, and people are going to be very... Uh, they, get, they get a little worn. Yeah, look at what went on. It was a decade in Northampton where it seemed like every two years was another override, another override. And finally, one of the, I think it was the current mayor, is like, I'm not doing it anymore. Right? You know what the tax rate is in Northampton? I don't know. I can I'm going to guess it's a little higher than $15. But I'm going to guess. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> So I would I would hate to to tag on to compatriots' point here that I'd hate to ask for too much and have it shot down for the sake of it being too much, knowing that our fallback is only going to be either using stabilization and having it be more structurally next year, regardless. Or, well, we were in this we've been in this boat before with the amount, yeah. and you know, okay. and then the, the argument was, well, we would have been okay with an override, but that was too much. Right. Right. So it's. It, it's, it's the it's the whole spin the wheel of feedback after the vote fails. Yeah. I didn't know it was that much. I didn't realize this would happen. I had no idea. You didn't tell me it's a big category. It's Which like, is why it's a good idea to come on down to the library on the 20th and look at some of this information because we're trying to, and I think that one of the good things about this too is, is it gives people a chance to get information before they come to town meeting mm -hmm. about structural detailed questions that they have because that'll actually save time at town meeting if we're not having to answer informational questions. You know, if you've got that, you come prepared, you've got the information, and then you can debate on the merits of whether it's a good thing to do or not, rather than discussing factual things that we're catching people up on. So, so to, to Lauren's point, if I could, Mr. Chair, $300,000 override is 86 cents on the tax rate, an additional $171.51 for a $200,000 property. So what was you, Sorry, can you say those numbers again, yeah. please? Yeah. So our current rate's 15, a $200,000 override, which is the motion that's on the table uh, for discussion, is a $0.57 cent increase in the base rate, which averages about an, an additional $114.34 to a $200,000 property. An 86, I'm sorry, a $300,000 override is $0.86 cents and again is an additional tax of $171.51 on a $200,000 property. And do we know over the next couple of years in terms of rate what's coming off the... Well, it's a good question. And uh, we're, we're two uh, budget years away from the removal from the tax rate of a quarter of a million dollars. That's the two buildings that are coming off the debt service, which are the element, I'm sorry, which are the library as well as the uh, public safety, safety complex. complex. But they're still in for FY20 and, and FY21? Uh, they end in 21. 21 is the last year of this. Yeah, that's correct. Right. Right. Yeah. So yeah. 22 is the first year where they're 22 is the first correct. year. The amount that you're dropping because the interest has fallen off almost to nothing. Right. The amount you're dropping is the principal plus a little bit of interest. That's correct. So, yeah, and so to Peter, to Peter's point, about one hundred and seventy thousand or yeah. something like that. Yep. 
you look inside those numbers, there's a little bit of debt that's not excluded that has to do with the uh, uh, sewer relining and green green communities. But the two buildings go away in two budget cycles. Do you remember what percent we're paying on the interest on those loans? I don't. We can I ask. Thought them. it was something real good, like about two percent. It is. It, yeah. it is, but somewhere between one and two percent. You know, in that yeah, range. I mean, we got a really good deal on right. that. We did. So we'll end up. You know, you go two years out, mm -hmm. making up that a, a, a vast chunk. Well, if we do two hundred, it's certainly yeah. more than right. It would wipe that out. Tom, what do you think? I, I think Lauren's question is a valid question. Mm -hmm. my, my, my problem is how, how do you, I, Peter said it before, I don't, I can't, the elementary school had a, what, a 10.8% increase a few years, two years, three years ago, right? right? Yeah. Frontier went up 6% that same year. You, know, you could have a $300,000 override this year, wouldn't it be enough to pay for it? Correct. So I, I don't. I don't know what the right answer is. I, I just know I just know that um, we, we, we get beat up because we say we, we ask for too much. We get beat up. We say we don't ask for enough. Um, I, I think to try to tell people that you want 300,000 or 400,000 or pick, pick the number to, to in, anticipation of possible uh, possible um, reworking of the pay scale. That's a tough pill to swallow. I think because I, I have no idea what the next year's school budget is going to be. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen to our. Although I know my insurance bill can go up no more than eleven percent. That's right. There, you know that's fixed at least. There's um, a show, I mean, yeah, part of the right. information is uh, let's say you settle on the number. Let's say it's three hundred thousand, and let's say you have a chart that shows okay, see so for a two hundred thousand dollar house, it's a hit of whatever you just said, yeah. one hundred and seventy something. Okay, and that's this year. And next yeah. year, you know, plus two and a half percent, it'll be, you know, approximately this, that. And then show that in twenty in 22, mm -hmm. where you think it's going to go down because yeah, of the debt exclusion? Yep. I mean, it, maybe that would give people a little sense of like, okay, mm -hmm. it's a hit now, but we are, you know, within the next couple of years, are going to see at least that come down a little bit. That's mm -hmm. precisely why I brought that point up, yeah. to illustrate that, you know. But it's um, not going to. I mean, it's, it's, it's not, going it's on not too. Huh? It's just, that's because essentially that's probably going to be offset by school increases as we know. Right. Or, or we know we need to buy a fire truck and the fire, tri fire truck's going to cost $500,000. Well, and all, and all these I things. Mean, you're, not, you're, you're not, you're not going to, you're not going to, you're not going to, I mean, n n people say, well, we don't need a fire truck. Well, when's the last time we bought a fire truck? Right. It's been a while. 98? 99? No, I'm sorry, this is 2001. Right, so. I think we bought one fire truck since I've lived so, here. So, do you, do you, another question is, do you need a fire truck? I would say probably, yeah. It's good for 60 or 70 years, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So is the US. Right, we have one of the old hey, ones from the mar 20s, to right? Mar yeah. to, to, march, to march in a parade, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so, so uh, Lauren's Lauren question is a valid question. I, I <laughs> you know, this, this, the, I, I would say you could, you could seek a $300,000 override and, and I know I'm going about to hear, I know I'm about to hear the laughter come through the, through the speakers coming back at us. We don't have to charge $300,000. Right. But you have that ability right. that yeah, $300,000 is there. I hear the laughter now because they say, well, what politicians <laughs> never, sure. so, but I, I mean, that's an option, but I, I, I can, I can tell you right now what, what I've seen, what I've heard, what I've read, you know, pe and, and I believe what you said earlier. If you tell people that you have a $200,000 deficit that you're trying to take care of this year, okay. But I'm not going to give 300000 because maybe you're going to raise salaries next year because they're going to say if, the, if, if you have 300000 you will spend it no matter what. I, I can't convince them otherwise, Lauren. I, I don't think we would. I think there's no three people tougher on the budget than the three people that sit at this table. Um, and, and, and you and I probably have had more discussions about budgets than two friends than, than, <laughs> than, than, than two friends should ever have. And I count Lauren as my friend, but we have probably our most of some of our deepest 
longest conversations about budgets. And that's just how it is. I, res- I respect I respect your opinion tremendously. I respect Peter trem- tremendously. I just know what happens in our town. And, and not just our town, every town. So. Well, I also think we, we're running into an issue that there's also the voters this year, I feel, are going to be even more resistant to the idea of any override this year because we didn't pass one last year and it just happened that we had two or three things that offset Mm. allowed us to scrape by but it gives the voters the impression we had a three hundred thousand dollar override on the table with absolutely no need for it. Well, and and, it, so, and yeah. that's just short-term well, thinking. Yeah, it, was, it was pitched, it's really important to bear in mind, it was not pitched against last year's budget. It was pitched in advance of this year's budget. That's yeah, right. true. Because otherwise we know at some point we're going to hit a wall right. and we're going right. to have to right. make some serious cuts somewhere. And Well, again, it, it's two, there's two paths. Either we backfill this gap with uh, reserves. This is not germane, to, this is germane, but not part of the motion. Mm-hmm. Uh, we backfill this with remaining reserves or the use of stabilization, which is not a recurring revenue stream. Next year, we have increases, including requests or outputs of a study or an increase from the elementary school or the electricity goes up or whatever, whatever happens. And uh, this gap simply grows because you use a one-time fund. That's just balancing a checkbook. There's no, there's nothing to it. Well, look, we, we sit up here and 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 we we see we see the light in the tunnel. I know. We we see the train that's coming. I mean, we would be we would be deficient if we didn't tell people that there's a train coming down the tracks. That's all. That's all it is. And 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 I think we were we were tasked the other. Last week, a week before, when we look at we 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 have found ways to um, offset some of our expenditures um, through through the management of the the resources of that that we have by and, and, and Scott said it the other day. I mean, you look at the telephone system. Right. We had twenty four thousand dollar grant for the telephone system, right? Around twenty four yeah. twenty four thousand dollars that that we would have had to come up, but we were able to, Sherry was able to get us a $24,000 grant. We look at- Plus the money we save. We, we look at 300,000, we look at, we look at a 24% savings in our energy costs because we got three hundred and some seventy thousand dollars from the state green for communities. green communities right. money. Right. So we had to we, we, we needed to to reduce our thing by our energy consumption by twenty percent in twenty years and we did twenty four percent with <coughs> I mean, that's real dollars in our pocket that we didn't have to spend to be able to do that. Right. I mean, those are just a few, two, just, and, and I mean, you can go on, we go on about the money that we save on our insurance because we send our guys to uh, uh, training classes that, that are put on for free. And then the money we're keyed up to, or queued up to spend or save with um, the streetlights. LED right. streetlights, yeah, that and was the LEDs. special grant funding as well. And not only do, we, do you save w- with those on... Um, the energy use, but mm-hmm. you know, you're not spending as much for bulb replacement and maintenance costs, hopefully, too. So, I know I've converted everything over to LEDs. Now I don't have to worry about getting rid of compact fluorescent lights. Yeah. And so, so I, bet- I, I, I mean, I, I, I wish I could take care of next year's problem. Also, I, I don't think we, we could. You know, and I, I would just say that hopefully. We would we, we do the, the wage study. We find out where our deficiencies are, and it may take us two or three years. Maybe we can't do it in one year. Maybe it takes us two or three years to make make the correction. But we do we may have to take a few years to do it instead of one year. Right, and that was one of the things too. We definitely acknowledge as a personnel committee is we, whatever we see, we may not be able to tackle it all in one year. We we really weren't planning to do all that at once because I think that would have been too much of a hit. Um, I have a motion on the table. I haven't heard, haven't heard it second. Second, it's been second oh, it's for second. discussion. Yep, yeah. for discussion. Right. I'm ready to vote, Mr. Sure. Chair. All right. Um, all those in favor of a two hundred thousand? Aye. 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 So we'll notify the clerk.
Now, again, it's important to bear in mind, we're going to go forward to town meeting if this budget process continues to unfold with a budget that's contingent. Correct. And that contingency is going to show up in the motions. That's going to be a very, very important contingency because if the override does not pass, $191,000 and 191101 as of today needs to be reduced. And it comes from three areas. It comes from general government. It comes from the elementary school. I know. The other one's free cash. The yeah. other one's savings. What was, what was the amount of the, the increase again for the 200000 uh, uh, 57, 57 cents. 57 cents. And then or the total was $114. So we're looking at offsets that should be more than covered by all the the great giant yeah. tax gonna, decreases and tax cuts that we've all had this year, right? Exactly. So that should, See, that should political. cover that, that's right? That's political, not governing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's correct that the uh, FinCon's recommendation needs to be before April 2nd, is that correct? No, that's no. Not, that's notify the clerk for a ballot question. Oh, that's okay. Town clerk, so it can be actually added to the election. Okay. okay. Right. With that, thank you for the discussion, everybody. Yep. So, so, exciting part of the discussion. I think. Yeah, anything else we want to cover on that? The not budget? Not in the budget. Tom? No, I'll set the everything. Sure. <laughs> Nope. All right, so then we move on to our, do we want to do the appointment first, maybe get that sure. one on Motion. the quick Motion. Move to appoint as as sent to the town clerk. That's, Got a second on that? Todd Jarvis. All those, in, yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. Dan Peruse is to be sworn. All those in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. All right. <coughs> and now we get to review our warrants. Excuse me. So tonight, uh, if we're, our mission tonight is to review the draft. This is the warrant is closed, and we're going to be seeing about moving to include. That's about it. Right. 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 Correct. And then it'll be vetted for language, gotcha. and uh, numbers will show up in the motions. Yep. Okay. Just include. Just include Article One. Second. I'll do that one. I'll second. You're, you're, you're vote tallying. Yeah. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Three to zero on that one. Include Article 2. Uh, do we have a second on that one? This is salaries for elected officials. Yes. And again, this will change in the motions if it needs to be changed. Yeah. Uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three to zero. Conclusion on that one. I'll move the budget article for general purposes. And gotcha. It's important that, again, the motions uh, require them to be um, all of our funding sources and a now contingent language. Mm -hmm. no. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Three to zero on Article 3. Article 4. This is our free cash to stabilization using the formula. Yep. Uh, again, the motion. This is a warn the community that we're planned to do that. It doesn't mean that that will happen again based on the motions. So I'll move to include. We have a second. Aye. All those in favor? Three to Aye. zero on that. Aye. Okay. And Article five is the transfer of the free cash to stabilization. Mm -hmm. Capital stabilization. Capital, excuse me. And again, part of the same formula. <coughs> move to include Article five. We have a second on that one. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 So three to zero on Article Five. Why do we have to under? If I could, Mr. Chair, Article mm -hmm. Six. Why moving funding from free cash to this pay? This is to pay back the twenty-nine thousand from last year. Special town meeting. Yeah. So the language has got to be. To make it whole again, just there's peg a access. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Uh, move to include Article Six. We have a second on that one. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Mm -hmm. It's important to bear in mind the folks at FCAT and Pig Access Fund is running at a deficit currently. Aye. All right. And then Article 7 is for the capital budget. 
capital team is meeting tomorrow night. We'll be working on that budget for submission. And again, this will have a funding source and the budget list so, as it presented as so a budget. So pass over seven? <sighs> Um, I don't have anything to go with it, so it's awful tough to... No, we're just going to be including Tom. This is just going to be the funding source and the budget. All right, motion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. That's three to zero for inclusion on in the capital. And then Article 8 is to see if we will appropriate 20000 from the Community Preservation Fund. The CPC recommended twelve. CPC vote was to recommend 12? 12? 12? Yeah. Oh, okay, I don't have those yet. Okay. So we ch I'll change that to 12 then. This to 12? All right. So uh, move to include Article 8 with a value of 12,000. Uh, we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, 3 to 0 on in the inclusion of that. And then Article 9 to see if the town will vote to appropriate 66,000 from community preservation. And this is for the huh? this is for the river walkway park. Oh, yes. okay. Yeah. Um, move to include Article Nine. Second. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And just as a reminder, folks, this is only for inclusion as we rifle through this list. So, Tom, are these these are the these aren't uh, right numbers. These are the annuals for refunding yep. the coming. Article year? Ten is the annual. These aren't the right numbers. Though. Yeah, we're still waiting for that. Okay. Data numbers. I'll oh, change I guess the you numbers. Can, you can include this, but these aren't the right numbers. So we have to move to include and ensure the numbers are corrected based on the, the formula from moving forward with CPA funds for the coming year. All right. Aye. Okay. Both. Uh, Aye. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It is zero on Article 10. All right. And Article 11. <clears throat> okay, so Article 11 is the establishment of the values for the revolving funds, yep, for inspection our... fees, etc. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We, that's an annual exercise that we do every year on yeah. that one. So they raise the fees and then it goes right back to the. Sort of a self sustaining in that sense. And Article 12 to see if the town will raise an appropriate. For uh, this, 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 this is a request of the Frontier. Yes, for the utility tractor. Yeah. And that value, I believe, is going to be reduced. Um, the total value is going to be reduced, and likely it will be reduced through the motion. Right. This is what they sent us for the request, but there's discussion at the capital oh, team okay. about changing that value. Right. Okay. Well, a motion to include on that one? Um, well, it's, it's a good question. Um, I, I can change. Yeah, the values have to. The value has to be changed. In the right. motion. In the motion, exactly. Second. Uh, I moved that, so that was a okay. second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And Article Thirteen. This is this for the study that uh, Lauren, uh, library trustees, were just talking to. Yes, our personal. Study. personnel committee has come forward and I think you know rightly so asked for some how much money you asked for is it five um, initially we asked for five and then there was some discussion about including the contracted and union employees in that study so um, it could go up to somewhere between seven and ten um, I have to. I think uh, we're going to get a final number. Contracted on and union employees. Yeah, I actually. Or benchmarking. I actually asked that question about if we're going to look at you know thirty one employees, why don't we look at all of our employees? But the more I think about it, we. we I, I hate uh, to have a study done on the school. Mm. It might balloon it too much. Yeah, we we'll keep the original scope. Okay. okay. All right. So then, then that number will yep. will we'll remain. Then. Okay. Yep. Okay. I mean, it keeps it a little more focused. Yeah. Correct. I, I understand where you were going because it, it's a great big picture thing, but it, uh, it's one of those things that's a little risky because then it might it kind of derails part of the focus. But it would be nice to have that, though. And, I agree. Yeah. I think every union contract with schools that we go to, their, their wages are being compared to similar towns in every conversation. I don't think, I don't think they're believing anything on the table. No. Not in my negotiations. I was just being feisty yeah. last week. But <laughs> That's okay. It was, a, it's a good, it was a valid point. Yeah. I know. Motion. 
<coughs> second to include. All right. All, right. All those in favor? All right. Aye. All right. Uh, Article 14 is for our annual snow and ice deficit spending. We're in the, what, 20 plus thousand range? Um, a little over 18. Oh, that's not bad. Motion. Oh, uh, second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Again, these are just to include. Correct. All right, and Article 15 is for the veteran, the care of the veterans' graves at the North Sunderland Cemetery, and this is for, I believe, is it $500? I think this, this request, the article as it's written, should state that it's for this fiscal year. Right. Because they requested for the fiscal year. Right. We want to have this turn into something that's perpetual, okay. as well as encourage, in, not in the article, but still, the, for this fiscal year. You should also encourage the board of the board of three that there are there's a regional veterans agent they can contact for some of that assistance just like we do at Riverside Cemetery. Hmm. May as well use some of the same same resources. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Makes okay. sense. Uh, second the motion to include. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three to zero on Article Fifteen. Article 16, this is for agree, uh, allowing the board to enter into agreements for the facilitation of pr electricity purchases and other related aggregation things why, for energy. Why are we voting this? Is it because of the... Um, so um, this would allow us to participate in that regional um, aggregation, aggregation that oh, the FERC hog oh, is yeah, doing. Yeah, yes. Yeah, the, yeah. So the residents and the businesses would go on, and then the town buildings would go on when our, we're um, contracted with public mm -hmm. power. And Once so, those end, right? Yeah. So when that ends, the town buildings would go on. So this is this is a motion to uh, this is warning the citizens that they're accepting a statute. We're not participating in aggregation yet, nor. Nor has right. that study been complete. That's correct. Okay. My reason I, I have some concerns about aggregation mm. in, in general, yep. and um, I would I would hate to be at t a town meeting where, you know, 160 people show up and you know vote the fact that they can change the supplier f of everybody in town's electricity in three years and no one thought about it. So I would like to make sure that that has a lot of discussion. Oh, the energy great. committee will be. Yep. Um, having something at the pre-town town meeting. Right. Uh, Jim Barry's coming in on April 13th. I'm I not saw sure that. that um, I think Bob uh, Dean might be there as okay. well. So. Okay. Uh, move to include. Okay. Have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Three to zero on Article 16. And then Article 17, excuse me, <clears throat> is for the acquisition of a purchase. Uh, uh, for this is for the Complete Streets project. Um, is there a, a garage there a, a road, right? Piece that yeah. Was Do we have to take some corner, or it's an easement. So there's an easement for the sidewalk. Their fence is on our property, I guess. Yeah. So we're ah, we're trying to get easement for that, so that we can extend that sidewalk in that area. Okay. Um, the property owner's been notified. Okay. Uh, and seems receptive, so I'm just waiting for documentation to, to come back. Motion. Oh, second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three to zero on that. And Article 18 is to see if the town will vote pursuant to Chapter 41, Section 110A. Any public office may remain closed on any or all Saturdays as may be determined from time to time and shall apply in the case of such closing of any such office on any Saturday to the same extent as if such Saturday were a legal holiday or take any action relative thereto. What does this mean? Yes. I don't know. <laughs> That's like, what I, I'm not Saturday? really sure. Uh, the town clerk. Means we'll never have a Saturday election. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you. <laughs> it's like a. Mm. So chapter 40, it's, it's statute, We're not, this isn't home rule here, so it's chapter 41 of section 110A. Adopting Massachusetts statute. Um, it's from the town clerk, so I'll move to include. I know the Sundays were not mentioned. Second, so the town clerk can come and explain this to yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. It'd, it'd be a pleasure to no, see it. It'd be a pleasure to watch the town clerk come in here to explain <laughs> Explain it. Because that. that's what... <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure it makes sense to somebody. Uh, but boy, oh boy, when I when I read it, it's, it's funny when I hear it read to me. Yeah. It still don't make sense. Yeah. Right, we need the elevator pitch for this. Right. Exactly. You know. All right. 
<laughs> All those in favor to have the town clerk come in and explain this to us and include. Aye. All right, aye, three to zero on that one. And she only gets 15 seconds to do it. So. <laughs> All right. Uh, citizens petition. Yes, Article 19 to establish as a position of Sunderland County. Sunderland County of Franklin, State of Massachusetts, the tough new anti-corruption laws for politicians, lobbyists, and outside groups such as super PACs are necessary in order to protect and promote the First Amendment as the most st stakeholders in government instead of major donors. They have all the, it's, it's certified by the clerk? Mm-hmm. Move to include. Okay. Second. I came in with citizen petition. Yeah. I'm not going to have to vote, but okay. Yeah, right. No, I know. No. Second. It's 14 paragraphs, but as long as it's certified by the clerk, it's on the warrant. Right. Not, you're not stopping it. And that, that, that's one of the beautifully clunky parts of our democracy, which I happen to love. Nope. All right. All those in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. The remainder are consent articles. Move them as presented. Yes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero on the consent from 20 through 25. Don't we have to have a discussion about the fire truck? Yeah, that we, was where the is other that one? thing, because that would have to be um, on the ballot as well, correct? That exclusion? Yeah. Okay, we're going to have a discussion about the fire truck. Uh, I, the fire chief is asked to have it on, so I would say it needs to go on and make the motion. So we got all the way to, hang on now, we got all the way to consent articles. That's not on there. I don't see it. No. It's not there. No, it's not on the, the warrant. It's not on our warrant, yeah. Right. <clears throat> we want to have a debt exclusion question? You have to. I understand we have to have a debt exclusion question. Yeah. Okay. Motion. motion. Yep. Uh, Tell us that motion. And this is to notify the clerk of a ballot question. You have value? We have a, it. Was, it was cap, the yeah. capital committee hasn't looked at the probably money yet for it, have they? Tomorrow. Okay. The number, if you want. Or, I don't think for debt exclusion we don't have to put the number in it. Or is it part of your is it part of your capital plan? It's part of our agenda tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. The number is five hundred and thirty-six thousand eight hundred and sixty-eight dollars. Is that the way you want to include in the motion, Tom? Sure. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So that means we're going to go to the town and ask for an exclusion mm -hmm. and a non-excluded override. Pick right. one of each this year. The variety pack. <laughs> it's a variety pack. So the excluded, uh, excluded debt, debt is for the life of the loan. Mm -hmm. Correct. And the other one is for life. Right. Unless we end a ride. Right. I know people get it. Right. Confused, right. Yeah. So we'll try the to fire truck sure would disappear once it's paid. Yeah, yeah exactly. In 20 years or whatever. Up in smoke. Like, just like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> what's, the, what's the normal period for financing the fire truck? Is it 20 years or is there something different? What's the recommended? I think we can only go out 20 on equipment, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. We're looking at a USDA loan. Oh, if the yes. USDA loan grant program, you can go out as far as 40 years. If I don't know if we want to go that far. Yeah. Up, but. but that's the beauty of the, the loan. Traditional but financing it's, it's won't usually let 20 you. 20 years, that's a little bit under 30,000 a year. I'm just talking about what, what the numbers, how the numbers actually work. It's looking yeah, under right. 30 a year for your capital part, and you can get a low interest loan still on these yeah, things. So far. Mm -hmm. For what, a couple percent? Yes, probably 3% 3 or yeah. so now. 3% of that would be another 15,000 a year. So you're talking overall 40,000 mm -hmm. a year. So at 40,000, 40,000 a year, Peter, right here, we've got a 150 at uh, 43 cents. So if it's 40,000. Probably about 15 cents. About 15 yeah. cents. Okay. Trying to get a sense of the scope. No, I agree. I think right. it's important to it's important. have that out there. Because it does, you know, it's like you could have two totally disturbing things, but somebody says, well, I'll vote for one, but not the yeah, other. Exactly. Right. Yep. That would sort of like. 
one of the reasons, one of the what you're describing is one of the reasons. Certainly, this this board's had discussions in, in the in the past about menu overrides and the value and the detraction and mm -hmm. how it, it can be like it can be like feuding, and we try to avoid I don't think it. Good at, idea. No, I don't no. think. So. Personally, don't think nope. so either. No. In this case here, clearly two different things, but you no problem. Exactly right. And I think you said the fire chief will be at the library. Uh, no, he Is won't. It, no? He's no. not able to attend on the 20th, but we're going to try to squeeze him on on the 13th before Jim Barry's presentation. Okay, all right. And so maybe at least we'll something have something for the newsletter as sure. well. Right, maybe we'll have some information there so people can at least see the numbers. Yeah. <laughs> so that would be good. So when would we follow up with, if it passed the debt exclusion, when would we follow up with an appropriation? It would have to be a special town meeting after you got the, the firm set of uh, bids. The spec has gone out for a second time now. It's gone out to bid for a second time. There's two bids that have been returned versus last year. One of the reasons there was reluctance last year, we only had the one. Right. Like, yeah. So there's been some specification changes. And I want to, I want to, you know, take that the time. That is the new bid from yeah. the firm. Yeah. yeah. I want to take the time to give the FERC out. A credit. I, I I take as much time as I as I feel I need to beat them up when they need to get beaten up. But they've been really helpful on on both this as well as uh, with our housing plan, as well as yes. our work with the 120 North Main, as complete well as streets. The complete streets. So they they they're hitting their stride right now. So they're helping us with energy reporting. Um, yes. Yeah. They've just they've been wonderful. All the things that we hoped. You know, yeah. That we get right. some help with, which is good. Right. And um, potentially the ADA transition plan, we got a, a community compact grant oh, nice. for $20,000 for technical assistance. So I did reach out to the COG and they'll be available in the fall. Oh. So we do our self-evaluation and our transition plan and then that will make us eligible for um, up to $200,000 for implementation of recommendations that come out of that. Okay. So. Well, that's good. You don't have to keep a running tally about how many of those community compact grants Sunderland's actually gotten. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Yes. We appreciate it. We're doing good. Because it's a lot of work to take, you know, to, to go It's great this, because it? I like the program, how we develop best practices. They give us the technical assistance so we can do our capital plan, do our long range yeah. forecasting, do our ADA plans. And then they, you know, they give, they reward us by giving us funds to implement so well, and you hit on a thing too is, is we're trying to implement Complete best streets. practices so you know it, it's we're saving money but also we're putting in like a lot of the things we're putting in you know it, it, whether it's formulas okay. practices and everything so that hopefully we leave a legacy of a well-run institution when all of us are long gone and things still keep moving along without yeah. you know you don't want to have your best practices come and go with people right you know, and the it's, practices yeah. should stay right. and the efficiencies. And, and we see that in our bond rating, which went up uh, exactly. um, double to A. double A. So That's right. No, no one sees that, though. They don't understand. Well, Wall, Street, <laughs> Wall Street loves double us. A. Wall Street loves That's us, right. yeah. Yes. But double A? That yeah. is correct. We went yeah. up again. Pretty good for a small town. Yeah, yeah it, it is. is. It, most we, we but most people don't understand what a bond rating means. Right. It costs your cost of borrowing, that's for uh, sure. Yes. Yeah, but, but they don't understand how you get good bond ratings. Good bond rating by managing your finances. Why? It was a, it was, it was a different animal a little over a decade ago. But yeah, it was just. Kind of, I, yeah, that's very good. Interesting. Absolutely. <coughs> Uh, if I could, Mr. Chair, with respect yes. to updates, I was at the GCC Saturday morning with a bunch of other folks from the area, legislators, selectmen, school committee folks on the re-envisioning of uh, rural education sponsored by Senator, by Representative Mark. Uh, yeah. it, was a, it was a lively discussion with the three sets of action items that were leaving it. There's a couple of interesting like mind-numbingly interesting hmm. uh, pieces that came out that I'll, I'll share another day. Uh, okay. We're getting late in the meeting, but I do want to say that that meeting was really well attended by people who are interested and by people who were running for district office. <laughs> well, that doesn't surprise me. Yeah, but I actually wanted to make that. I, I unfortunately couldn't make that. Okay. I would have. Uh, I was interested to see what came out of that yep. because as we struggle here every year sure. with the def with the budget and everything. Right. Hey. You know, well, we all know, like sure. it, something else has to change because we can keep doing this, but we're still going to be banging our heads against mm -hmm. the same wall every year. The town, the town of Heath did it. The civic group, the civic group, and the heart group did their presentation as to what the what Heath has gone through and what their next phases are. I mean, that's that's like 
closing schools, moving kids, consolidating sixth grades, just like the the real bite the bullet. Right. But it took years of visioning and years of town meetings. But again, sustainability was the cornerstone of this of this uh, of this uh, uh, four hour workshop. Well, it also makes me think too that you know as we periodic, we're probably coming up do for our periodic whack by the formula. Yeah, well, the formula was a big, lively discussion. Yeah. Very lively discussion. I bet it was. Uh, it's very, you know, yeah. you, 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 don't, you, don't, you don't mind being part of the formula if you're Weston. You do mind being part of the formula if you're Sunderland. Yeah, exactly. There's an interesting penalty about your ability to pay. If you're well over your ability to pay, you still get uh, the, the 82 to and a half to 100% gap. Mm -hmm. And if you're three hundred and ninety percent over your ability to pay, you still get your basically eighteen percent state mm -hmm. gap. Meanwhile, the town of Greenfield at a hundred percent gets less. Like what's wrong with those it's, numbers? It's, it's mm -hmm. really oh interesting. Anyway, yeah. By, uh, <laughs> Digression. According, according, <laughs> according to that according to that group is a five hundred and fifty five million dollar a year transfer from towns that struggle at or below their at or below their ability to pay the foundation budget moves to cities and towns that are above their ability to pay can i, can I just say one thing about education expense yeah. mm. I, and and i'm sorry but massachusetts for whatever whatever you may want us think about education public education massachusetts is a, stein, a shining star oh, and, and out of out of the 50 states massachusetts continually right. is is one ranked number states. one in all in, in almost all test scores it right. was it was a great it was a great graph top so the presentation one of the presentations was like and here are scores you know fourth grade reading fourth grade math eighth grade reading eighth grade math so the massachusetts spends in the 60th to the 80th percentile and yet we're right up top I, I and i'm just saying that <laughs> it was a very if, interesting if anybody if anybody yeah. if anybody it was a very questions why you have education why you spend for education you need to travel to some some of the states that don't that have some of the lower scores mm -hmm. and, and see what goes on there mm -hmm. okay Google, google's not even considering those uh, places for H two, right. okay, yeah. uh, and, yeah, and, and, and and we're in, or Amazon, right? Yeah. Amazon, and and I and, and again, Boston may or may not get it. I I don't you know, I've but they're they're, they're they're in they're in the fi they're in the final pairing to look look at doing that. And and if anybody thinks for one second that you don't get what you pay for an education, sure. and, and I'm sorry, but education is a labor intensive thing you're not buying widgets right. look, look, and, and look at it our, our fire department our fire department we buy a new truck every 10 15 years and that's five hundred thousand dollars and we argue about spending that money and we spend it once every 15 years or 10 or 15 sure. years we're buying the future Unfor of our country un un we're un unfortunately for education to have a, have a halfway decent education you you have to spend a little bit of money and and last I looked at Sunland Sunland Elementary School and Frontier were not number one and number two in the states for cost of education per pupil. Matter of fact, yeah. you'd be embarrassed to find out. You wouldn't want to know where we rank. <laughs> cost per and, and that's just and, I, and that's just and that's just and that's just numbers. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And 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 and, and, and I will say that if you look at. For for the teachers must be doing something right because our doing our kids are doing pretty pretty well. So that that's that's all I have to say. I so and if you don't if you and and, and two thirds of two thirds of our budget is education. Basically, is education. And in order for a democracy to thrive and survive, you need an education. Well, we're not doing that. We're not doing that too well, so I won't go right there. Maybe. <laughs> not lately, Matt. Well, maybe that says something about what we spend on education. I guess. I, I, I think you have you have to have education. You have to have education. These kids, kids, the kids, okay. our our parents and their parents and the parents before them all paid for education. It's something that every generation has 
has seen and has has paid for. So, and, and you know, you go back, you go back to 1932 and look at the the annual reports back in 1932. And what what were people complaining back about in 1932? Education budget. Right. You go back to 1832, you'll find the same thing. Right. So. Yeah. Well, as mentioned by our Marcus Aurelius, realize that many mistakes are the results of ignorance. You know, I'm, li- I'm liking Marcus Aurelius. <laughs> you, know, you know what Stephen Hawking said? Watch your feet. Oh. It's, better, it's, better, it's better to look up than look down. <laughs> that is very true. Something like that. You yeah. need something to look forward to. Um, move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. I like Marcus Aurelius. We should have kept going. Just-